what she means, but that sounds exciting. Oh, fate Hello. effect. Okay. Welcome to the tiny factory. YouTube should be fixed. Stream. We're just setting some things up, but we're going to continue building the project that we started in the last stream, which was a social media image generator. Hey, chicken chicken. Hello world. <laughs> Yeah, just give us a minute to get set up, um, and then I think we'll start by going, doing like an overview of the code that we wrote last time, and then continue building off of that. Okay, we should be Twitch, YouTube, and Periscope. They will show all of the same thing. So then, um, I'll check YouTube. Then. I'm gonna just minimize this. Minimize everything that we don't need. And then um, glitch. Um, we're working on a social media image generator. So in a second, actually, let me switch so you can see uh, the screen. OK. Let me know if you can see the screen, chicken chicken. Could we, could we go with the social canvas one or the 3D one? Probably no Node.js, so... Both of them did. But one was like more colorful and the 3D one was like kind of more chromatic. Mm. So basically, we started building this UI last time to... Um, to generate kind of like social media images with like some text. So for example, maybe we'll put in here, and we're gonna clean this up today, ideally. Let's just say Merry Christmas right here. You can select an image, so we'll just try square first, uh, initially number of shapes, size of the shapes, and then you kind of select like a theme, a color for the theme, and then hit this. And then what you'll see, HTML5 canvas like elements, with various layouts, and then if any of them look interesting to you, you can click it, and it will be in your download. So that's the image that we just uh, saved. So that's what we have right now. If you have any questions, we'll leave it up. So then, yeah, so we have like triangle, we'll hit that, and then again, we can change the size of the shape. Small triangles, we do big triangles. Big triangles is very cool. Oh, actually, this one's really cool. <laughs> they kind of look like trees. Yeah. So like then this. So then this circle. Oh, actually, the max size on circle is okay, in my in my opinion. Eh, sometimes it's kind of a lot. You can do small circles, and small circles looks pretty cool. There we go. Little dots. If you have any questions, chicken chicken, let us know. I can try to answer it. So yeah, so now let's walk through the code a little bit. And then at that point, we'll probably hand the, hand the uh, keyboard off to you. Mm -hmm. For your interface stuff? Let's see, edit project. Um, yeah, I think there's a couple of small changes we can make to the project itself. And then we can probably add some like inter interface stuff. And then maybe, wait, wait, you mentioned potentially um, doing like an illustrator thing initially. Mock up of Fig Pig Month. Okay, we're not even using this anymore. Wait a second. Oops, I, we actually need to use our other project. Switch. That's cool. What was your project, Chicken Chicken? All right, so maybe we can start with this. I had a thought about what we can do to improve this, but first let's walk through it and then maybe it'll come back to me. So, so this is a Node.js project, so I'll, I'll um, touch on the front end first. 
or the HTML. So on the very, very top, I had just have all of the um, inputs, everything up to this. Mm. And so we'll populate this in the here. JavaScript. Yeah. Um, and then I import this client.js where all of the canvas stuff is happening. So we'll pop that open and take a look. At the very top, basically, I'm just selecting all of these things up here. So mm -hmm. we can like get the values and do stuff with it. Um, I like the format button now. Yeah. Right here is um, so size value dot in index dot h dot inner html is setting this number right here. So whatever the value of this slider mm. is being set on the the initial value is getting set to this number right here. So it's fifty, and then number value number of shapes. So this number right here. Then right here, there's color value dot style. So this is a this is this right here. So one of the elements in the index html is just an empty div. I've selected it right here. Right. So all of this top and that stuff slider is kind is just, of like the background colors are just being scrubbed randomly, or what is the for the main color mixing? Like for the slider, what this data slider. is it? Is it changing just like a bunch of values across two fifty five? Uh, yes. What is the... uh, so I'm using basically the the saturation is one hundred percent. The lightness is just fifty, and then and where... then it's just scrubbing through the first part of it. Yep, exactly. So it's it's scrubbing through the hues. Um, and then I also pop, I pop on these event listeners, uh, and these event listeners will just listen for input on, we're going to do this piece of code again. So you'll see that these two pieces of code are exactly the same. So it's just like, as it's changing, we'll just update that number. So this is all setup stuff. And then one more setup thing right here, right? And this is for the color one and it's doing this code inside is exactly this code. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So up until line 32, it's all setup stuff for the top just to keep the values, maintain the values. And then here's where we start getting it. Um, here's some helper functions. You'll see them come into play later on. Um, and then this also comes into play. I think we're actually not using it anymore. Actually, yeah, okay, we are. Um, basically, what this function does is it kind of adds like perspective. So Jeremy last time was um, mm -hmm. suggesting we use this. For like selecting color, but basically, if you look at this canvas a perspective, and it didn't work that well, um, so we're still using it, but it didn't work that well. So like as basically, you specify an A and a B, where A is the background color and B is the color you're trying to reach, and then you also specify an amount being zero to one. If you if it's zero, then the color is going to be exactly A. And if it's one, the color is going to be exactly B. If it's 0.5, it's going to select. It's going to select a color between A and B, where A and B are hex values, hex colors. And so you can kind of use that as like your perspective. So if you're saying like, oh, I want a color A trying to get to B um, amount like 0.1, mm -hmm. then it's going to be very, very close to the background color. And it kind of creates that like perspective shift where it kind of feels like the color is very much like far away or that object is very far away so this mm. rectangle uh so this rectangle right and here that's faking perception feels just kind of like feels, yeah but we didn't really get it working super well uh chicken chicken was sharing something about awesome i'm glad it's easy to follow um yeah mm. so we have a little bit more to this to this project at its current state and we're going to be adding more to it really soon so if you want to stay around and watch feel free it is kind of like labeling on the SVG file. You can write the number on it for documentation purpose. I will be very grateful if I can share my project, but it has lots of bugs. It takes two or three hours. Yeah, sure. If you want to share it, uh, we can take a look at took, take a look at it on stream, and just and maybe offer you some tips or things like that. Maybe feel maybe free to share it though. It. It's totally we'd totally like to look at it. So um, okay, so we lerp color. Just talked about that, and then. There's a function right here that gets called later, decorations, and there's a function called media canvas. We'll come back to those two. So let's scroll down to the next bit that happens. Uh, this is a helper function that takes a canvas and then it can convert whatever is on the canvas. So like, yeah, whatever like image or drawing is on the canvas, mm -hmm. it'll convert it into, that's when we click, it'll convert it into a PNG image that gets saved to your computer. Okay. So um, you'll see that come into play later. And then, okay, so this is kind of where the magic begins. 
um, the button mm -hmm. that add event listener clicks. So it's waiting for that let's go right. button. And then it's basically going into generating the 20. Okay. Exactly that. So um, we'll talk a little bit about what's happening. Um, we had to add a server because there was a piece of, there was a library that we wanted to use that was a Node.js library. And this um, helps are all pastel. Exactly. So the first bit is when you click that button, it's going to go make that first server call and it's going to slash colors and then the color tag dot value. So based on like this main hue color that you've selected, it's going to go and generate kind of like a palette of colors mm -hmm. uh, that you can use. So first thing is it's going to hit this path. So we press uh, Node.js Express setup stuff. Uh, we import the color scheme libraries, is, which is what like generates our color thing. Um, and see them. Mm. Oh, that was weird. Um, yeah, so the root route is just going to send the index to HTML. So like if, when we run the root, it'll do it. But then we also have this route slash colors ID, where ID is like a um, a parameter, a, va a variable in the URL. And so we can access whatever is put here by calling rec.params. It's like a parameter of the URL dot, and then the name of the variable. So in this case, it's called ID. So if you remember, when we called that oh, client.js, right here, when we called it, we called slash colors plus, and we pass in the color mm -hmm. tag dot value. So we're basically right here at rec.params.id, we're getting that color value mm -hmm. from hue. So we'll pass in that color ID that we specified here in the uh, top section. And there's a couple, couple different schemes. Like the scheme that we've chosen to use is called triad. Um, and then you can specify things like distance and then kind of like a variation where it kind of like chooses more pastel colors or maybe soft colors or things like that. And then if you call scheme.colors after setting some of these basic parameters, um, it'll just gen stringify and you'll see this all the time when passing data from the back end to the front end because, um, yeah, I guess to my understanding, like, um, when you're like passing data between the front end and back end, you do it as strings most of the time. So mm -hmm. you'll stringify it, turn it into a string, and then on the JS side, we'll convert it back into JSON, and then we can use it. So that was that was literally the only reason why we created an express server, so we can use this color scheme function and generate the colors. So back to the canvas. Um, the first thing that we do after this, uh, this Node.js route returns to us is um, we get the response right here, and mm -hmm. this has that data, and we convert it back to JSON by calling response.json. Okay. Once this has happened, then we have to pop it open, inspect the page. And so, oh, this, feel, this looks kind of small. Okay, yeah. there we go. So let's just use red. So you'll see right here, console.logged is, is a list of 12 um, hex colors. So this is kind of like the palette for if you choose this hue red and mm. you have like triad and you have like the triad scheme, uh, pastel variation, it's going to give you these colors. So that's what we're getting. And then you'll see the colors are reused, different um, background color each time. And yeah, ooh, this one looks very nice, save. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we have the data. Um, the first thing we do is that canvas area. Canvas area is referring is uh, referring to this right here. Mm -hmm. uh, this first passing the data into that. Yeah. So the first thing we do is we clear it. So if we had just um, if we already have some canvases here, we clear those. Okay. Yeah. And then we're gonna go through the loop that generates all of the canvases. So in our case, we're just gonna generate twenty canvases. Um, and what we do is basically. Uh, create a new canvas element in JavaScript, and this this and the HTML has no idea this exists. This is all in JavaScript. Mm -hmm. We do some stuff. We set the canvas width and height, and this width and height variable was specified at the very top of the file. Um, you'll see right here. This is the part to download. So we added a an event listener, a click event listener, to every single canvas, so that when clicked, and then you can so e dot target refers to the element that was clicked. Okay. So canvas.event listener click and then e.target is the canvas that was clicked. Mm -hmm. 
we go and call download image, which was one of our helper functions. So that's actually right here. And you see the thing that we pass into download image is a canvas. So we can just pass in e.target, which is the canvas. Um, and then, yeah, basically this right here converts it into a PNG. This code, I don't actually quite know how it works, but you know, I found it on Stack Overflow and it does what we need to do. <laughs> so that uh, explains most of my experiences yeah. in Stack Overflow. Yeah. Gives it a name and then, yeah, downloads it, whatever. So that's that's the point of this, and then happens. So, so we're so we create like on each loop, we're creating a new canvas, getting the context, passing the context to Media Canvas, which is going to do a bunch of like canvas manipulations to make all of the stuff that we visualize. Okay, and then it just appends it to the div. Okay, now obviously all the magic's in here, so mm. we're going to walk through that. But like basically, it's just like we pass the context in, it does a bunch of stuff. And we add it to the twenty canvases that are that are visible. Nice. At a high level, that seems straightforward enough. Yeah. <laughs> Cameras off. Cameras off. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's mean? cropped funny. Oh. Uh, yeah. Like that. It is. It's fully oh, off. Oh, I see. Well, it was, well, I'm it was just out. Okay. Okay. No, that's fine. I can see you. Okay, so we'll walk through this and then. Okay. Um, that that's it, and then we'll just continue building this, building this out. So, yeah. So here's the two things that uh, canvas, the media canvas, we're passing to it. We're passing the context, and we're also passing uh, the data. Data being the colors. Right. Okay. So we'll scroll back up to media canvas, and this is where all the magic happens. So we have the context available, and we also have the colors array. Okay. Um, the first thing we do is select a base color. So, uh, for background, or for the background, for... yeah, that's the plan. Um, and so length minus one. So it'll, that's basically the whole. Uh, it'll be like a random number between zero and eleven, which is the. Um, it'll be just, mm -hmm. and then that's it. So the this first variable is our base color, and then we draw the background. So, I can't remember why you need begin path. If anyone knows. Uh, comment in the chat. But um, you need it. You do. And then basically we're just drawing a rectangle that starts at the zero zero top left coordinate mm -hmm. fill style. We spent set the fill color to base color and then we fill it. And by doing ctx.fill, that's basically the telling it to X. We draw the decorational shapes, all the squares or the circles or the triangles. This function is pretty messy, so we need to we could refactor it. Um, if we want to do like big changes to it today, for some reason, we can refactor it. Let's go to the decorations function right here. So again, CTX colors and base color are available to us. Um, so first thing we do is we get that, um, we select and get the shape dot value. So whatever the value is of this right here will be shape type, the variable shape type. So square, triangle, and we'll use that. So you see that shape type variable is used in this if statement down here. We do a for loop. And uh, we're going to loop uh, number tag dot value number of times, where number tag, number tag is um, the number of shapes. So depending on uh, the number of shapes the user wants, um, that's how many like hmm. loops we'll go through, and we're creating that many elements that many on the shapes. screen. Yeah. Okay. So here's where the base color comes back into play. So we're, we also need, so on each loop, so each shape that we're creating in this decorations loop, um, we want to specify an end color. So this is where the lerp function comes in right here. You'll see lerp color is called right here. So mm -hmm. we're specifying that B color. And again, we're using the exact same piece of code. We're just selecting a random color from the, we're gonna set the fill style for that shape. And we, we pass in the lerp color. So we pass in the base color, which is the background color. We pass in the end color, which is like the color, the other color that's been selected. Mm. Um, we do one divided by the number of um, iterations we're going to do. And then it's like, OK, um, let's say we're iterating 100 mm. times. Then we're going to, um, then one divided by number tag that value would be 0 0.01. Mm -hmm. And then we multiply by i, so depending on which iteration we're on. So we're going to be having 100 iterations, mm -hmm. right? So 0 0.01 times 1. I don't know if this is like the best way we could have done it, but 
we wanted to play around with this because uh, yeah. someone jumped in on the chat last time and suggested it, which was really cool. It's an interesting way to like yeah. still create that variation, so, but also in a consistent way. Yeah. So basically, we're basically all we're doing is we're creating a color for the shape. That's all. I mean, okay. we'll leave it. Um, if it's a circle, then here's the code to write a circle. Um, and then you'll see a bunch of random names, and that's because we're randomly placing it for the x, y coordinates. We're randomly placing it somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be a full circle. So if you say 2 times math.py, it'll be like a full circle. Uh, the second one is the y, and the third one is uh, the radius. And then there's a fourth one right here, and I'm trying to remember what the point of this one is. Size tag dot value plus 10 divided by 30. Um, Wait, wait, do you remember what the point of this was? Which one? <laughs> um, random int size tag dot value divided by 70 and then also divided by 30. It was kind of providing like a range or something, right? The first, this is the circles? Yes. So x, y, the center. It might be worth it to Google HTML5 canvas. Oh, our stream just went down. Oh, it just came back. Oh, it's having trouble. Where? Um, Ethernet's not connected. Oh. Uh-oh, we lost everyone. Where's the mouse? Okay, so let's just quickly Google the arc function just so we can remember yep. like Good for canvas arc. Okay. X, Y, the starting angle, the end angle. Oh, this piece, this one piece of code is confusing me. Um, all right. Anyways, is that to allow the circles be circular versus ellipses? I thought it was this right here, like say two dot. Yeah. So they all begin with begin path, and then you fill it, fill the path, I guess. Sure. Um, similar to before. Yeah. So rectangle is going to be x coordinate, y coordinate. Um, right here is the width, and this one's the height. I believe. Wait, why are there? Okay, let's also Google that just to confirm. Let me check to see if the others are still. Oh, oops, I think I was reading this wrong. No, no, that's fine. Okay, so yeah, X coordinate, Y coordinate. Yeah, so this whole chunk right here is the width. And so basically, oh, I remember now. Yeah, so and this is the piece that we use for lighter. Mm -hmm. And then um, divided by 70 is just a pretty small number. And then size tag dot value plus 10. So this was very randomly done, you can see. Mm, triangles good. and enough. circles yeah. looks good enough at mm -hmm. the max and the min. Um, so yeah, that's what's happening here. So that this is the, uh, well, you have to pick like a random starting like point, mm -hmm. x, y. And then um, you have to do a line to. So you can do a line to another position. So we start at x, y, the coordinate x, y. Um, we move to some, so we add a little bit of X and a little bit of Y randomly, kind of random um, things. And actually I realize if you notice when we do triangles, 
You notice how like they all kind of look to be going to the right. Mm -hmm. Like the top left is kind of sparse mm -hmm. towards the bottom right. Mm -hmm. um, we could add a bit where like um, we randomly multiply by negative one so that it's not always going before we move forward. Yeah, <laughs> sure. All right. I think it would make it. I mean, I think it would make it look that much better. Do you want, do you want to switch that? Uh, this is okay. okay. Um, Let's see. So basically, right now we're adding right now, and then I guess what we want to do is we want to. Maybe we can wrap all of the. It's now going to get really messy, but we could wrap this in another function that will like fifty fifty pick negative multiply it by negative one or not multiply it by negative one. Okay. It's I, sure. I don't know. It's it's ugly. But you know this is a hack project. <laughs> function. Reverse. <laughs> I'm not sure. So specific. And then, um, so I'll just use um, the random int function that we had here. So, oh, oops, win equals random int uh, zero to hundred. Add up here. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I know it's not great. So it's like if if decision is greater than fifty, which is oh, times negative one, so it'll return it to whatever called that function. Um, else, actually, we don't need an else statement, so it'll return right there and just end. Otherwise, we'll just return the integer back. Okay. So we'll do nothing to it. Uh, yeah, I guess if you want to do it right. <laughs> I don't know, it may need it or not need it. Yeah. Uh, JavaScript won't break if you don't do it. Is it Arduino practice? gets really mad. <laughs> so I'm used to being. Okay, so I'm just throwing that, I'm wrapping every single random int in that. This is bad. It looks so messy. We should, you know what? This should actually maybe be done in a, in a function. I totally, when you said that, I thought you were gonna take the, like, the majority of that, put it into a function. And then just pass Let's it do it because this function's not maintainable. It's such function, a uh, This function it always has to do with size. The ran that that ugly chunk of code always has to do with size okay. of the shape. So like, cal can pass in the size. So the like uh, size tag dot value. So okay, so this ugly piece of code. So it's in there now. And then size tag dot value. Oh, oops! I think I copied. Okay. Calc shape and the size tag dot value, which is that 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 one slider that we need. So. And then rather than doing that, we'll just pass in the size. And then we did plus ten here. That plus ten, don't ask why. I couldn't tell you. Because, I'm doing that. Uh, turn off Bluetooth, and it will stop doing that. We need it for the keyboard. There we, oh, the mouse. Yeah, I can get a cable for it. That's okay. We'll just leave it for now. So then here. So this is how you can get. Way way showed me this technique. Oh, to select multiple lines at once. Yeah. Okay. Command. Wait, wait. What's the command to do the highlight? If you have them all selected, it's like Option Shift and then move it. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, twelve o'clock. I don't know if the stream can hear that. No, I lost. That. <laughs> you were so close. Okay, there we go. So, bam. Check that out. Okay, so I mean, I still think this looks ugly, but you know what? It's better than where we were a second ago, right? And it's for that reason, cleaner. for that reason, we're gonna call it a day. <laughs>
All right. Wait, what happened right here? This is like. I think it's just returning because of the screen width. It's wrapping it to the next thing. Oh, okay. We're good. I think. Because it's it shows it knows it's one line. All right. So let's just put confirm that this is not breaking anything. Reload. Hit that. Okay. Stuff still showing. Okay, so anyway, that was that decoration function. And then the last thing that we do after we decorate this, the canvas context mm -hmm. is we also um, draw the text right in the middle of the screen. And so we're picking a font size right now for that. We're, this function right here, the ctx.measureText is like a built-in function of the canvas context okay. that will take in a text input dot value and whatever its font size is, mm -hmm. and we will calculate its width. And so... Mm -hmm. We actually append add 30, which is going to be 15 margin on both left and right side of it for the text box. Um, and then the box X and Y, so uh, this is the top left X coordinate of the uh, top left XY coordinate for the rectangle that's kind of behind the text, that, that the kind like of darker, darker rectangle. black rectangle. Yeah. rectangle. And how we do it is we just get, we get to the half point, the width, and then we subtract um, half of the text width. So it gets like, sh it goes to the middle then it shifts a little bit more. Mm. Um, for the height, we just did it kind of manually. We just went to the middle for the height, and then we shifted it up 30 pixels. Um, so you'll, you'll see box X and box Y, and then we see the text width, which we calculated right here, plus 30, so we have a little bit of extra margin. Um, and then, yeah, 80 is just the height of the box. And then we fill style with um, a random color. Or, and we sort of, so we sort of just pick like 0 to 50, 0 to 50, 0 to 50, so it's kind of dark. The mm -hmm. color will be dark, that's all. And it'll always be kind of dark. Yeah, it'll always be kind of dark. And, and that's then, mostly you're sitting just to help with contrast against the text. Yep, yeah, exactly that. And then this fourth parameter is the, uh, what do they call it, opacity. Mm -hmm. And we just pick like some random one between 0 0.7 and 1. So it's pretty, it's always going to be there, but maybe it varies a little bit. Um, and then we throw the text on that. So. Again, it looks like we double set the font. I think we don't actually need to, but we'll leave it for now. Uh, text is going to be white color, and then we fill with text, and we pass in the text input dot value, which is this box right here. Um, box x plus 15. So the position of the text for the x coordinate is going to be the box x position plus 15. So we're moving it in, so we have that 15 pixels in margin for the text box. Okay. And then box Y plus 28, so it's not right at the top of the black box, it's a little bit down. And so if we type in some text right here. Oh, yeah, so we so the font size is way bigger oh. than when we initially did it. Yeah, it still could work though. It still acts kind of as like an underline. Yeah. Depending on the so it's kind of up to us. We can So this is something we can definitely play with today if we want to. So, because we're getting into the more aesthetic stuff of this project. And that's everything. So I've now walked you through every single bit of code. How do you feel? <laughs> uh, in the moment of being walked through it, it all felt yeah. good. So I'll be sitting here. So I can't like, yet create any of, recreate any of it. But. Yeah, but if if we need to refer to stuff, I, I remember it all. So at this point, maybe we can take a look at this and talk about what might make sense for a UI in it, given yeah, what these do do? pieces. Yeah, the first thing that came to mind is like once watch, once we have an image that's actually been generated, um, so like once we have this, uh, it could be really nice to have something that actually, upon hover, somehow it indicates it's downloadable. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I mean, obviously it says click, but we can do a nice state for that. Um, I think there's kind of the classic like. If you split it up in three columns, two of them are the content that's generated, and the far left one is just kind of all the tools. Mm -hmm. um, there's some typography stuff like that before that we've done, so I think that's one option. Like you could, you could like absolute um, position the toolbar on the left on the hand left, side, yeah. and then you're able to scroll on the right. Right, and then it would just show you kind of everything that's been generated on the right. Um, because I think you could, even though the canvases are like this large, I think you can CSS it so that you can keep the dimensions being the 800 by 600, but yeah, yeah, on yeah. the screen here, it previews it as 50 smaller. Yeah. Yep. So then you could still have like two side by side, because I feel like it's nice to like 
have the side by side because mm. you can like quickly see a bunch of them. Yeah, um, for sure. You can still have that, and it can be on the right side in a smaller section of the screen. Yeah. Yeah, so something like that feels like that could be good. Um, what else could we do? I'm gonna open up Figma while we're talking. Okay. Uh, we can also go ahead and add like uh, links. So we could add links to like you know, since this is an example code project, we could add links in either the footer or in some form of the header to both the actual like record of where the broadcast is, mm -hmm. so you can see that as well as the actual uh, glitch instance that it's running on, so people can find it. Okay. So. How do you want to go about this? I've used this tool a little bit, so I'm thinking we should at least create these, right? And then it's 800 by 600 is what these are going to be. Yeah, we can even just uh, we can just download some and just pull them. I'll let you kind of take the reins from this point. Uh, oh, oh, oh. So we just just download a bunch of random. Oh, nice. And those are going to download this folder. We have other ones too from previous times, <laughs> which might be fun to add. Yeah, a bunch yeah, of like so all maybe these. we can reference these. Yeah, so here, we'll just pull these on. And so that should be relatively. Look at that auto snapping. Cool. So, yeah. That's, wait, is that, uh, that's fine for us, because you can break them apart easy, right? Yeah, yeah it's just, it's, um, oops. She had, yeah. uh, it'll just auto snap then. So what we can do uh, is we can start by doing a make a frame, and we'll just pick a basic desktop frame. So we'll use this as kind of our. So where's your interface going? These are our morph examples. Here we go. All right. So we basically have. Let's take a. Can we take a screenshot of the thing while recording? We will find out. Problems. Uh, that way we just don't need to toggle back and forth. Oops, I got a key right here. Do we have a. Where's our screenshot gone? Alright, let me try that one more time. And we'll actually look and see where. Oh, clipboard. Okay. Oh, so you paste, right? Uh, in theory. Ooh, hey, technology. Okay. That's actually pretty sweet. So basically, this is what we need to like replicate in some way, right? Mm. Um. Oh, actually, wait. Our UI doesn't have to be if we're. Oh, oh, desktop. Cool. Never mind. Yeah, just in terms of like those are the, that's the stuff that we need to mm. to code. Um. So I guess initially what I was thinking is it'd be really nice if I remembered how to make a ruler in here, but I do not remember how to make a ruler. So let's just see how right this is. So if we say this is 1440, we'll see if this one supports math. I don't know if Figma support Figma supports math. That's so great. Um, so we'll kind of plan to put these somewhere over here. And then we're going to have all these nice little for some reason, I like the Merry Christmas circle ones a lot. Yeah, those like, ones are nice. Those ones feel the most balanced. <laughs> Have you used Figma? Chicken, chicken. Figma is kind of slowly becoming my favorite design tool, just because it's nice and Nice and quick. But before that, I used mostly Sketch, so there's still things in Figma I will consistently forget. Oh, XD? Yeah, I know a lot of people on XD as well. I go back and forth. XD, I think, has much better uh, like prototyping support. Um, you can just make stuff generally, I think, faster if you need to like show something off. What do we need? We need to drop down, we need a place for text. And to make sure I'm understanding right, like so, this 100 goes with this, right? It's 100 number, like yeah. These yeah. things correspond. That's kind of like a unit. Mm -hmm. So maybe then <laughs> I keep trying to do sketch shortcuts in Figma, which is of course not going to work. Uh, 
So yeah, so I guess we can start by making like a little, we'll kind of make a little panel on this top part. This is also good because I can see if there's any shortcuts at all that I remember. Let's make that, oh, let's just make this background less of a I don't want our slider to necessarily look like this, but I just need a temporary slider object. So we'll have the number. Again, this is so that's like total number of shapes, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're just gonna be a little generic here. Just be like, we have a title and we have a number. My initial thinking was if we have both of these. Make them a little bit, a little bit readable. What do we want to do? We could just kind of have both of them and then put the slider on below it if we wanted and just put one on each side. Mm, at the end, yeah. We could do something like that. We could also put the variable there, like put zero and whatever you're I at there. I kind of like the, yeah, that one right there. Yeah, something like this would just be just feels like quick. Feels like I've seen it enough times I know it's kind of common. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be like people will know yeah. what it is. So should we group those three together? Well, do I think IXD is more powerful? Or XD is more powerful? Uh, from what I've seen, it seems faster at prototyping. Um, so more powerful in the sense of you can mock something up that you need to be interactive pretty quickly. Um, I still tend to use like, I originally would always use Sketch and then some third party add-on. Um, but I kind of am just keep thinking Figma is going to work out because of the collaborative nature. So I keep kind of just holding out for Figma to do everything that I wanted to do and <laughs> just kind of keep hoping that'll become true. So I don't know if it's more powerful. I think it's better at certain things. I think they all kind of still are better at their own niche thing, but I think they're all also trying to kind of catch up towards the same, same point. All right, so we should probably make a rectangle. So we need like a text box. That's a giant text should we, box. Should we do the grouping for like the, those those components, the three that go together? Yeah, they I should be. What it, I forget what it is. Yeah, so if we highlight these guys and do Command-G, we will group them. Sweet. Oh, we should do, you no, know, we should add. Hmm. We should add one of those plugins that shows you the key combos as you're doing them. <laughs> oh. That'd be really helpful. <laughs> okay, let me put a. There's a good uh, open source one on GitHub I used to use, but I don't know if that's still a thing. If anyone has suggestions for how to a good plugin for showing key shortcuts, you should you should tell us. All right. So yeah, and then we'll have our little some form of a drop down thing. Okay. I think I'm gonna end up leaving this relatively crude as my suspicion. Title of projects. That is not <laughs> that's not the mouse. I just moved to post we'll it just as if try I was to use mouse. this. To command the computer. It was not very effective. Alright. Um, I'm mostly just trying to loosely think about where the stuff's gonna sit, and then we'll basically have all of these guys. And at the bottom, I think it'd be really good to put like more like maybe two buttons or something about the project. Yeah. So we can be like, hey, this is where the code is for it, or this is where the other thing is for it. You know, like here's the glitch. That's a high glitch. Pitch. I don't wait until like tiny factories or something like that. Yeah, tiny factories, the video, tiny factories seems good. Do they have normal emoji support? Oh, they don't. No, that's so sad. Okay. Tiny factories minus an emoji. So I don't know. Obviously, this isn't telling us a whole lot, but just getting us like a loose, like, loose layout for what some this could look like. Hmm. Put some padding. And then I was thinking just for a real simple like hover state, we do a couple things. The first could be we just have like a really light opacity and then we put text on it that says like download. Download. Yeah, that sounds good. Where did my text go? Otherwise people have no clue that there's that functionality when you mouse over. Right, so it's like that's one option. Um, oops. Clearly, I do not know all of my Figma shortcuts well yet. Do one more time. Uh, 
Also, I'm kind of ignoring font and all that because I already know what font I want to use, and I know I don't want to bother importing it into. Okay, that's probably a little bold, <laughs> but we can Let's get the gist across. We can uh, we can get something line kind of thing where when you hover, it adds a nice little shadow mm -hmm. or something like that. And we could even combine oh, yeah. them or do something like that. But maybe we just start with something like this. So this is like a very very loose, very very loose layout. Um, the one's gonna be like so this will be generate right. Ah, thank you. I forgot an entire button. Oh, that's on the bottom. I forgot right. a whole button. Um, I think generate some more. I have no idea if that's just the, the o. tools. Yeah, everything should always have a built-in spell check, but that's just my own opinion. Um, so here's like the text for poster. That'll be some input thing. You click on the three shapes, but I don't think that's going to be at all clear what those shapes do. Yeah. Um, so for now, I think this will just be our drop down, and maybe we put before at the beginning of it, we put like a little. Um, emoji or something for the shape that's selected or something like that. So yeah, something like this, super basic. Um, the only thing that's different, right, is that we need to do the color thing probably. So yes. for one of these. And we only have three sliders, so you can actually delete one of these groups. Cool. Goodbye group. Uh, and then why don't we just say for the last one, since we have more space, we can ungroup it with Command Shift G. And oh, it ungroups everything. I don't want that. I want that to actually back in the way because we're doing color. Um, mm, yeah. And we can just pick a random little red right there. Little color nice. box. Uh, it could be kind of nice to like say what the value is, just because for people who know color, that could be nice to have some form of a little hex value. So right now, when we're picking this color, we're technically seeing, we're technically picking multiple colors, right? Um, we're putting colors. them in, sorry, when we pick this color, yeah. we're getting a string of colors. Um, no, no. We're just modifying the hue. So we're picking a, a hue mm. in the hue saturation uh, lightness. Mm. Is it lightness? Mm. And so the hue number will go between 0 and 360. Um, mm. It's kind of hard to visualize this right now, but like... I was curious if there's anything else we could... Uh, yeah, okay. so you're kind of like going around a wheel of colors. Okay, so maybe we'll... We'll think. Maybe there's a cooler uh, <laughs> Eventually, there will be an article <laughs> yeah. that we're working on all about. We through a class recently. Yeah. Um, I'll drop like, the notion link. Yeah, on like interaction design, I guess. It's um, even open. But yeah, I think it might be worth to take that tangent briefly for me too. Wait, wait, don't click the link I'm sending you. <laughs> Just developing these like learning logs where we kind of start you kind of then go on and add your own notes and refine it over time. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of, uh, I got really, um, but it's not really clear you're looking at a color cube if you don't know that you're looking at a section of a color cube. So a little bit so they can all see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. Actually, we can about color real quick. So just the super quick overline is basically at the top, I have different areas I need to continue and still want to explore. And then at the bottom here, um, I have a little bit of a draft started. Um, basically just outlining like how we're all introduced to color. Typically as kids, you learn about primary, secondary, and tertiary. Um, and then eventually, you know, as we get better, we start mixing colors based on their relationships with one another. Um, and then this guy was kind of trying to develop a spectrum of color. So I think at like the really, really high level, um, the like most limped at it, but then we also are sometimes given slightly larger swatches of that color. But they're also a wider variety of reds than the palette that's presented to me when I'm highlighting. Um, but I just like, or an engineer, you're given like the full spectrum of like zero through 255 values. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're not someone that interfaces with five colors of a highlighter, you suddenly get like, what is this? This is probably a uh, hundred. But oh, also, if you want to learn a lot about color, there's a really good 99 PI episode on. Actually, can you color, throw this link which is super cool. into the, in the chat? chat. Uh, maybe. So if anyone wants to take a look at this document that we're looking at right now, um, it's in the chat. So all of the stuff above needs to be refined still, but the part I really want to get to is explaining this, because I did not understand this the entire time I went through design school. And every time you're moving through this, you're actually moving through a slice of a color sphere. Um, and the new I wanted, or picking from like a color swatch. Um, so I basically made these three little gifts just communicating kind of like the 
and I'm basically setting the other two values to 255, and I'm purely moving through the green spectrum, which in this case is uh, horizontal. Um, so it's showing you all of the possibilities if you slice it by the color green. Um, for me, it was really helpful to like understand now where I was in that Adobe program. Mm -hmm. I never understood before where I was in that color picker tool. So to get to this as a conclusion, <laughs> Yeah. But in the meantime, this is kind of what sparked the whole thing. So I was, I've been thinking a lot about just color and how we understand it, essentially. Yeah, so then I guess that it, coming back to our interface that we're designing right now, it's kind of like this is a this very is, limited view. Yeah, like yeah. talk about sh like here's the here's the full view of what's happening. Yeah. And we're showing them just this. So yeah, perhaps calculating like we need to calculate you know, the background color and kind of the space of colors available that are being generated in all these dots. Maybe we have like a main color that's the one you're picking and then we have, yeah, we can play with that later. Um, so yeah, again, this interface is not super detailed or complex. The simplicity through of through. the design for a simplicity tool. <laughs> there you go, there you go. All right, shall we go for it? Woo, starting from here, dope. Yeah. All right, something that could be helpful is, um, one of the libraries we've been using. Uh, I'm really, yes, love pre-filled things. Okay, so uh, this has kind of been one of my favorite discoveries that we've been using quite a bit. Um, this is a designer at Figma, but he made under his projects uh, a really wonderful grid template, which I've been using in pretty much everything since I've discovered it. And this thing called InterUI Font Family which is like one of the only fonts I found that is like clean and literally supports pretty much every Latin character. So it's really helpful if you're planning on sending stuff to other things. Oh, and we'll t we should talk about this. This context standard thing is amazing, but we should worry about that later. Um, anyhow, so to start out, I think it'd just be good to, we can just download this guy. And then we can add that here to our files. But from what I remember, we only need this one. Yeah, I think so. And you have to do this weird thing where you can't drag within here. So if you want to relocate a folder, you need to rename it, go to the beginning, and then type like. Um, fix um, it. Yeah, <laughs> please fix that. That's like yeah, the that's most annoying the thing. Um, so we're going to add it. Um, I want if people don't know that this specific raster CSS has some built in CSS that we're probably going to use. Um, but I'm going to put it first so that our own style sheet overrides anything we want to They change. do some stuff with font, right? Is what yeah, I it's like it. basic font stuff, um, okay. which is super great. It makes stuff a lot faster. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then we're just going to, right we're going to go here, and we're just going to do kind of a global import for the CSS of this other font family that I really like. And we're just going to put that. And this will override whatever is happening in raster? Uh, yes, although ironically, it's made by the same person. Um, basically, this is just importing from a publicly hosted URL that he has. Mm -hmm. It's importing the font file from his website, so we don't need to download it ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so assuming he continues to keep that live and published, we should be good to go. Um, so I always like, we were already there. So I kind of like doing glitch like this where it's side by side. Has it already changed? Uh, it has not. Because um, we should probably tell it to change oh, the fonts. Because right now the body is being overridden. So if we delete that, yeah. yeah so do you see it. how the padding and all that changed in the numbers? All the different. Should we just remove all of the code, all of that yeah, we, we just can, so we're we starting can, from scratch? We can probably just we don't need that. Make it all go away. Also, I have no idea what this support one does, but I leave it because it sounds important because it says support. And yep, that's yep. why it's there. Uh, so I'm gonna go back Hashtag just to coding. <laughs> coding. <laughs> so uh, right here is a little example of this grid tool. I'm just gonna paste that in here, and then we'll we'll start adding everything into it. So let's see, we have our little head tag up here. Where's our body? I'm just going to paste what he has here, and then we'll edit it a bit and then tell you how it works. So actually, we can also show you here. So what it basically happens with this tool is uh, you start by wrapping everything like you see right here in a grid tag um, and a uh, column. Uh, and basically each of these little C's here is just a column. And whenever you list the span element, you're specifying how it's being displayed in the larger grid. So the grid above is just the first element here. And the second one is listed as span three, meaning it is supposed to take up three of these spans. So if I removed this C, it would take up one, two, and three instead of two, three, and four, for example. 
And then we have another one here, which is just, again, a regular C. Um, you can also specify a starting and ending location for any of them in the grid. So this one right here, this is two plus two means mm -hmm. start in column two and add two total, which is why it ends in three. Um, and then that's written right here just by span equals two plus two. And let's say you're on mobile, entire column length. So which we should do because then it'll just collapse our uh, our left bar. So basically top. everything on the top and then it'll generate cool. all the images below. So we can totally do that as well. Yeah, so that'll be smooth. Um, I've really, oh yeah, so see, we just pasted the template in <laughs> that they gave us, so and it's it showing works. up ready. Um, so yeah, I really, really, really like this tool so, so much. Do you want to leave columns eight or do you want to play around with that? Uh, really, we probably only need three. I think three would probably be good. Um, we can also do something where we do like four if we want like the tools. There's not a lot of content here. Yeah. So it can be pretty narrow and probably be okay. So let's say we do four. So the tools are one and then, wait, would you, would you want to do five? So like, oh wait, no, then the tools section would be too small. Cause then I was thinking like two, two. Uh, yeah, we can totally try it. Do you want to try five? Sure, let's we'll give it five. a shot and see what happens. So we would just then do span, <laughs> keep touching the mouse with my palm. Uh, so in this case, actually we wouldn't have to do anything um, cause it'll just be regular first True. single column by itself. But we can be explicit and just say span yeah, one. Yeah, we can right? still say span one. And then do you um, have to put it in uh, Something to notice, locations? Glitch has no idea what this is. So it will always tell you you're wrong. That's unfortunate. Which is unfortunate. Um, other IDs are a little better about it, but they're still kind of like, we don't know what this is, so we're gonna assume you're just doing a weird thing. Uh, at the same time, I'm just gonna make a class. Actually, we'll do that later, because sometimes the thing he has makes that a little wonky. Okay. Um, so basically in here we'll put our tools and down here we'll basically put, uh, actually that we can probably just move right now because it's literally like one line of a thing. Um, this is basically the entire canvas. So we can just put the entire canvas in there. And actually the tools section, you can just copy and paste everything that's below. That's all the, that's all going to be in the tools section. Right? right, like literally all of that to here, right? Yep. I love simple code projects. <laughs> so great. <laughs> Um, I leave obnoxious amounts of padding at first, and then I clean it all up later. Um, and then if we do span hyphen s equals row, that means that and uh, we need to do span equals uh, two math. What is math? Uh, plus we want to go to five. So two, three, four, five. It's four, right? That's how that works. Uh, and it should go columns two to four, which we should see if we. Uh, we can we can go to the other page. Let's go here. and reload. That's a great idea. So in theory, assuming correctly, um, the thing we need to do next is, uh, which makes this kind of weird, is we just did this for the poster generator, but uh, we need to tell it every time it's outputting one of these images. But we'll need to wrap them in Flexbox later, and then they'll snap into a grid and retain that ratio like you were talking about mm -hmm. earlier. Um, but yeah, they're just they're being put over there, and that's what they need to do for now. So we're going to leave them there for now. And yeah, so from there we can pretty much just start styling. Um, Could I see one more time the the other tab? This one. Yeah, and then hit the let's go. Let's um, go. And then do you want to inspect as well? Yeah, inspect. And we can just make sure that like it is taking up the space that we think it's taking up. Yeah, let me move that to the bottom so, so it's not in the like, chat. Oh yeah, cool. Um, maybe we can zoom in on that bottom section, come in plus it a few times. Make that bigger. Cool. Um, so yeah. So, two so plus if you do, four was it command more. shift C? Nope. Control shift C? Oh, this is way ways computer, so it's different. Usually that triggers this guy. Um, so we can just highlight. So yeah, so we see here is column one is being displayed, and then here it knows this is a canvas. Um, and it knows that this is basically so that second C span, four. which is two plus four. And it shows it as being the full width. And so basically, if we want that grid, basically, we kind of just have to like 50% it, 50% the or 50 of the width of the section that these canvases are allowed to take up so that you have two side by side plus some padding. Uh, so the workaround that we found last time is that uh, because the C-SPAN we've kind of treated as like a large parent wrapper for basically just like responsiveness of like mobile versus desktop. What we ended up doing, um, and I can pull it up to double check, but we made a all of these individual items were just being uh, listed as individual divs, 
Mm -hmm. So then we took this canvas div element, element and in its own class, we just gave it a flexbox inline wrapper variable that basically just told it to stack each one side by side and they yep. just tiled the whole way down. Mm. That was the fastest way. And okay. then they were, they were basically allowed to move any, they were kind of in their own mini flexbox like grid because of that. Mm -hmm. But it was at least a way to kind of do that relatively quickly. So that's what we did last time at least. I so can go for the same. Sounds good. Yeah, we can do something, do something similar. So um, this is going to be kind of weird that I'm doing this later. Occasionally, because of how they read, like this, and mm -hmm. they don't, they will break with the quotations, um, and then it's oh right, this doesn't have auto. And we apply all of the CSS in the section rather than on the yeah, CSS. Yeah, and I put the class to the section. Um, cool, makes sense to me. So this is we can just call it. We won't call it. So it's kind of weird. In theory, we shouldn't have to do that, but it's been the like fastest way to make it kind of clean. Fair. Um, and then we can basically this, do the same thing. Or this one already has that div. When we're doing CSS, it's an example to see it side by side. There you go. So if we want to jump into here, actually, you know what might make more sense is if we open this up. Cool. Let's see if we can see. We can. Well, I, since we're not doing the right hand side yet, but yeah, perfect. And then we can mostly, yeah, and we should be able to see. Okay. So you, you're going to have to maybe. We get to do all of it. Classify those two. We get to classify everything. Classify. Um, yeah, and I remember, I still don't, I don't have a good flow for doing um, chat over there. There we go. Okay. Um, so yeah, occasionally I still feel like I have weird moments when trying to style like, either option drop down like this. We already have things in columns. We can definitely add a project title and more padding. Uh, we can find some like nice looking buttony things. And yeah, let's just make the buttons, I guess, look like buttons and go for that. So to get started, uh, we just made a tools class. Oh, this makes me miss SAS. So now I have to, <laughs> we have to make it all. Uh, why? Uh, so, Let's do a uh, background hyphen color. I'm used to autocomplete, so this could all be completely wrong. That's right. Uh, all right. Uh, let's just do. And then colon, right? Colon inside here. I think it depends on the values you want to do. Oh, really? Unpleasant color. Huh. Or I'm just wrong. I very well could just be completely wrong. Because in theory, tools should now all be. Do we not call it tools? Am I not? Chicken Chicken has a question for you all. Tools. Where are you guys now? <coughs> yes, it does say it's using connection. Oh, okay. It says it's back. I... Uh, yeah, I know. And that should make this more than stable. You know what? We could check is there's a chance the computer is being slowed down based on the size of the stream. Right, and let's we'll just go and check that real quick. <laughs> I like that way it has all the hidden files in it. Supposedly the file was here, but I don't see it, so we're just gonna assume that's not a problem. Okay, um, let's see, why else would our, oh, I see right here is where it says the stream. Mm. Would it help to go to... <laughs> yeah, the stream's not mad at us, it seems okay. Oh, the keyframe interval is only two. I'm not sure. But yeah, like right there, it just dropped off too. So because it's not showing anything above, is it? That means it's losing the stream. Although it claims it's dropped zero frames. Oh, from incoming. Hitting these little divots where it is like fine and then it just like drops out. Hmm. I'm not sure why it's doing that.
Can we pull out the Ethernet and try again or something? I don't quite know. Yeah, we can try that. The other thing we can do is we can just force it on that and turn off the Wi Fi. But that's the best. I bet it's on Wi Fi because it didn't do anything once we did that. Do we do we do we chance the chance the turning off of Wi-Fi and force it on the thing? We try it. They can see us with the loading sign. Circle, circle in. Oh. Pause. Hmm. All right. Turn off Wi-Fi. Yeah, so I must be forcing Wi-Fi for some reason because it just claims it's offline. Live debugging. Network connections. Okay. Uh, it's a happy green signal triangle now. Okay. So let's go for it then. That must mean um, something. <laughs> okay. You. Okay, I think that I think we fixed it. Um, chicken, yep. chicken, LA coder. If um, yes, yes. Okay. Oh, cool. Chicken, chicken, saying way better now. Awesome. So okay. if just uh, throw in the comments if it seems to be lagging. It looks like. Uh oh. Oh, it's going back to the thing uh -oh. I was doing before. What are you doing, Wirecast? What's going on? Okay, it's it's like still has problem. Uh, the only thing I can think of is pause and restart the stream. Um, Do you think that would help? I'm not sure. No lag, no. LA Coder doesn't see it. Okay, it's totally fine. Let's go for it. They're saying right. that it's good enough to uh, follow along. All right, cool. Um, uh, L LA Coder was asking for an overview of what we're doing, so maybe we can step back and show what we have right now. Yeah. So I already told him or them that Oh, it's lagging again, but just keep going, yeah. So I already told them that we are building like a social media image generator. Um, right now we're not going to walk through the code because we kind of, it took about like half an hour to sure. do that. But let's show them the... Uh, what it looks like? Yeah, what it does, just so they kind of know what it does. Where is our... <laughs> Where is the... There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Okay, so right now we have this tool, and we can enter some text to put on a poster and select an object type, basically. And we can select, this is the size, or sorry, the number, number of, that of so shapes. Triangles, so squares. So we create like 45 triangles for like the kind of background bit of the, the image. And then you can select like kind of the size of the shapes and we'll kind of vary it a bit. And then color. And then so the color, we're picking like a hue color and then it's gonna generate a palette based off of that color. So if you select this light blue, let's see what happens. Um, I'm not seeing the light blue, <laughs> but it is using it's that generator and generating this pattern based off like a uh, color rule set. Um, maybe try another color too. Let's try. I and mean, if we click it, it downloads it. Yeah, and then the last bit is that on any of these canvases, you can download the uh, image. Yeah, let's use it on some of the previous ones. Yeah, so we have a bunch of previous ones that we've done. Do you want to play around with the color again and generate another set? Yeah, let's do it. Let's pick a. Yeah, let's just pick another strangely bright color and see what happens. I'm so confused. What? Where's the... What's happening? Okay, well, there's the purple right there. You can see the purple. So it'll kind of like take that base color, generate a palette, color palette, and then um, use it for the background bit. Can we do squares? Yeah, we can do squares and then also maybe show the triangle. The triangles. All right, we hit an error. It's what? probably worth it to just quickly inspect and see what's happening. What happened to our triangles? Console. Where are they going? Not enough arguments. I will pass this off to you just to be back. Okay. Let's go back to triangle. 
Is this from um, how that other function was wrapped? Oh, it's because we were changing this slightly. It'll take just a sec to fix this, and then we'll continue on. So there's this function that kind of creates all that decorations in the background. Yeah. And the triangle bit, I messed up, I think. Yeah, I messed up the triangle bit slightly. OK. So that should actually fix it. So here's the triangle if we type in some text. And then here's what the triangle looks like. I think this one looks actually the coolest, honestly. It's kind of crazy right now. Um, we can drop the shapes. So we'll do 75. And so the next bit that we're doing is actually um, triangles went to Bermuda. <laughs> um, yeah, so the next thing we can do is um, or the piece that we're doing now is we're going to style up that UI a little bit. And then um, we're going to try to on the right side. So on the left side, you'll have the ability to you'll have like all of the um, the sliders and knobs and things like that available all the time. And then on the right side, you'll be able to kind of scroll through all of the uh, canvases and there'll be like two side by side going down. So if I go back to the Figma sketch, this is kind of like what we're trying to implement right here. So you have the uh, tools. Um, on the left side, the generate button, and then side by side, all of it. You want us to like uh, go into any bits in more detail? Just let us know. Um, so yeah, so yeah, here we're just generating. The triangles look the coolest, don't doesn't it? Yeah, I, I think know, now I that now, now that they're distributed more evenly, can they you look even cooler. copy Figma artboard as an SVG code? Can I download the image? Uh, yes. So if you click on any of these canvases, this one looks pretty cool. I wish I put in real text. Dang it. <laughs> but this one looks pretty cool, so all you do is click, uh, like I said, this is an 800 by 600 canvas, so um, uh, I th my understanding is that this is for Twitter, right, Wei Wei? Yeah. Okay, so this is for Twitter. Eventually, though, we could add one more parameter. Um, we have enough tool space. Yeah, so let's show the circles, too. Here's circles, and then I think circles looks okay. better with smaller, smaller circles, Yeah. Um, in my opinion. So here's circles. Um, and so yeah, so the next bit of this social media image generator that we want to do is style it. Um, here's where we left off. We were having some problems with the stream. I think those are fixed now. Um, again, let us know if anything's wrong, um, and we'll step in and try to fix it up. But for now, Will, do you want to continue taking the reins and sure. we will working on this front end? Do styling things. Um, Styling things. <laughs> styling things. We'll style the things. Right. So yeah. So the only things we've done styling so far is we basically imported this grid uh, from this website. Uh, it's just a nice basic raster grid for mobile. And then we also imported a font also made by the same, the same person. And the fonts basically just imported right here. And that's all we've done so far. Uh, and then we have one class so far called tools. And it's just for that tool tag on the left, of which we were trying to get at the entire background to turn red. And I did something wrong. So we're going to inspect why it is not red like it is supposed to be right now. Oh, I think, can we do background colon the color? Oh, yeah, sure. Join background colon color. Let me try. Yeah, because I think that's how you do it in like JavaScript. You want to do background? Uh, background color, remove the hyphen. Uh, remove the uh, the round brackets. And then colon. Oh, I'm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because you were in like JavaScript. I'm world. sorry, I'm in JavaScript yeah. world. That's not how you yeah. do CSS. <laughs> it, it's weird. You have to flip between all the links. Thank you, Chicken Chicken. Yes, yeah. that was that was the error. So okay, okay look, so now it's red. Color Great. Red. Sorry. <laughs> oh man, yeah, this would be even worse if I didn't make this like bad little sketch of what it could look like. This that would be, mm. yeah, that'd be a whole other degree <laughs> of just insanity. All right. Um, so again, the se it's only doing the section um, because it's currently we have a section class inside of it. Yeah. Um, I've had we can try it actually real quick while we're here. Sometimes I have issues when I love this raster CSS template, but sometimes it does weird things when you try to give it a a class. Sometimes it kind of freaks out the tool because it doesn't actually. We should put it after because it doesn't always render render correctly. But let's find out if that's still true. Let me uh, shut this a little bit. Oh, okay. Actually, that's that. Mm. It's lying. 
All right, doing its thing. Oh wait, um, while you're doing this, I'm or maybe should we pull up Chicken Chicken's project really quick? Oh, did you post it? Yeah. Oh, they, it must have yeah, just been they, the they lag of the chat. It. So I copy. I just copied it. So you should be able to paste it here. Yeah, go for it. Uh oh. Oh. Oh no, yeah. you're good. It's there. It's there. Oh, it posted the whole. <laughs> it paste. It posted the other bit too. So here's Chicken Chicken's project. If you want to jump in and explain what's happening. Nice. Oh, so paste, paste your SVG, SVG code, code here. Oh, it creates. Oh, and you're hosting it. Oh, nice. Google API. So I'm. A, it seems like you're hosting it. I'm going into your. <laughs> <laughs> I'm inspecting your inspecting. code, chicken, chicken. <laughs> Copy code. Where is the? Do you want to make it small? Right here. So Firebase storage. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So you paste in the SVG code. Nice. And then you just give like a nice hosted image that people can paste into your project. Anyways, Actually, we yeah, Chicken Chicken shared this a little bit earlier today um, because it was a bit related to what we're trying to do with the poster generator. So Will has an idea. I have an idea. All right. Will has an idea. We got to do something. Uh, emoji support on the web is kind of annoying. Mostly because like sometimes I'm very specific about the emoji. That oh, I want. chicken, chicken! Oh, oh, nice! Whoa, is your shortcut different? Shortcut's different. What is your emoji shortcut? Okay. Where is the emoji? I don't know it. why I want. Yeah, I was gonna make an SVG of the tiny factories little thing, but it's not. Oh, and we could actually throw your project into. Yeah, ours. Well, yeah, we can I use like a. Show. I use the very limited libraries. If you're interested, you can check later. Yeah, because we're kind of. I don't want to get too much. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, no, okay. All right, we'll we come back and we can try. We'll use that to host our, our SVG thing. Um, okay, so our entire column is now this <laughs> intense red situation. Can we absolute the left side so that it's just kind of like? You don't like this mysterious white border? <laughs> yes, we can. Command shift space. Yeah, yeah, for a moment. Yeah, I'm doing command shift space. It's not um and I'm even doing it manually with the little flag. It's not it says it's showing, but it's not on either screen. So I don't know if it's like a bug where it's because of how the screen's being recorded or what, but it's it's being it's being it's weird. Okay. okay, uh yes, we should do exactly what you just said. So let's go to our So if you absolute it, it'll still stay in its column formatting, it's fine, right? Yes. Um, what we need to do, though, that we should do from here is just see where it's being overridden, which I'm guessing is in. It's probably in the body style. Um, I didn't fully catch what you were trying to do right here. Like that, you mean? Right. Oh. Yeah. I was just trying to see what was being overridden. So there's a the raster CSS file, which I so dearly love, padding none, and then do all of our padding within the section instead. Got it, makes sense, okay. Because um, otherwise it has nothing to override, so it defaults to the other one. So so we can actually just go up. So like body and then padding none? Yep. Uh, I believe none works. I forget if it's none or if you have to put three zeros, but that should happen. Yeah, I think we have to do three. Oh, but it says it's being over. I think it didn't realize what none was. It's still, it's there. But Usually it I do that, that and then it's happy with me. Yeah, yeah cool. okay. it's working. I always forget sometimes you can use none no, and sometimes it just wants a raw variable. So now it's over, it shows and it actually, shows here it's overriding. Can I show you one thing? It might be worth it to um, actually use this thing because we're just doing that left hand bit right now. Yeah, like right oh, there. and there you can yeah. see when it's snapping too. So we can, it'll, it'll like have instantaneous like updates, which is nice. Cool, um, so what we can do now that we have that is we can basically, for people who want to follow along, uh, the code, none. Yeah, we want this, so I'll copy that. Yeah, go for it. Do you remember, I haven't tried it yet, but there's that new. Like, okay, three so if shortcut. anyone wants to follow along, the code that we're using is right there. Cool. Um, yeah, so I think what we can do next is um, let's make this column kind of be, so right now if we click generate, it'll become longer. So we want to absolute. But it's kind of weird, it's not longer to begin with. So I'm going vertical height, and that should at least, I can't believe I was doing JavaScript before, but I still think that's, and we'll make sure that if we generate something, it shouldn't have. So oh, we, that's interesting. That's fine, right? Because if we absolute the position, then it'll just, it'll always stay like that. Yeah, that's good. That's good, let's see that. So that's 
from what I remember, just position. Oh god, I have no auto complete. You're good. Position? You're good. Uh, I think just absolute. That's it. Actually, this is probably good. It makes me attempt to remember. That looks wrong. That's absolute. fine. Absolute. Yeah, you're good. All right. So now if we generate some stuff. Um, there was a weird like uh, reload really quick. Yeah, do you see the like? There was something slightly. It's subtle, but I think we can maybe. Huh. Also, I kind of want to move that that background color red. Can we do something a little bit more easy on? The yes, page? sorry. Yeah, I was just making sure it worked. Um, all, our, all our viewers are like, "What? <laughs> why are you coding with this blind? That's also ugly, but it's more calm." Yeah. And now we just have. I didn't even see the color square was there. Yeah. Um. Sure. Let's find a. Uh, can we use whatever we had in Figma? Like leverage that? Yeah, I was gonna find a, a nicer font, but that, that, that works gray too. is actually pretty good. It's a calm yeah, so gray. it's E E five, E five, E five. Oh, F four. Okay, never mind. Just kidding. Just uh, so kidding. Add our hashtag. <laughs> yeah, that that's like what's being uh let's actually quickly open that in a new window and see where our mysterious oh. Yeah, it's it's nice that he pulls in stuff by default, but I always forget what I need to just like completely turn off. It's literally just this little HTML bit. Font size block spacing top spacing. Block spacing top so block spacing right. bottom. Uh, what am I trying to do? There's a chance there's a hyphen in between, but I can't remember. Let's see. Oh, scroll up. I saw it. Uh, right down a little bit. Right there. Block so it's all just one bottom. bottom. Uh, and I guess set to zero. Zero sounds good. And then. Uh, oh, M. M is helpful. Okay. Oh, so. <laughs> Interesting. It was that one, wasn't it? Hold on, check the one. Bye. So it's taking that and calculating it based on its line height. Oh, it's it's listed. I, I wrote the wrong thing. It's uh in this root. Okay. I don't know. I have no idea what root is. Yeah, but we can override that. Yeah, we can just say root. Beautiful. Wonderful. <laughs> HTML root. <laughs> oh my god. Tell tell root. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'll try, I'll try, I'll try. I also typed in a zero. Oh I thought. <laughs> We're just adding new variables all, all around. Uh what? I keep okay, these posts. You may know this, but if you want some more detailed color palette generator, give it a tr give this a try. Oh yeah, the Adobe color thing. Yeah. Yes. So we are I actually like using some of the color rules that are specified on this website. Uh, so they specify triad. Yeah. The triad is the one we're using. So if you want to click on that, cool. called uh, colorscheme.js, and uh, it might be worth it to drop right. that in the chat. Or we'll leave this tab open. So color, oops, colorscheme.js. So we are using, yeah, so we're using this library right here. Oh no, I just removed the URL. What am I doing? And this library has access to some of the kind of like rules that were specified in Adobe, um, like the triad rule, the uh, monochromatic, and we can access these rules to kind of create our color palette. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking we should come back to this. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It's it's doing a weird. Oh, you know what it could be? Is it his own custom thing? Nope. All right. Cool. You know, we're just gonna comment it on. I'll leave that there as a happy reminder that we should at some point figure that out. Okay. Uh, okay. So usually. I like using the columns for just kind of the main wrapper. 
And then usually inside of that, so like within tools, I would put tools in a section or something like that to take everything else up. But what we can do next is we can make kind of a little wrapper for each of these little element pairs. Because yeah. we're going to need, um, if we go back to the Figma, where it says number of shapes and 100, we would want them to be like next to each other, line by line. So <laughs> I can see this one's upside down. <laughs> oh, nice. That's a nice touch. OK. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. we should add a title. Titles are, yeah. Titles are nice things. Okay, so yeah, let's let's do that. So if we go back to our index file, um, uh, I'm just gonna add an H. I keep assuming it's gonna auto complete. Um, what do we want? Is it, does it have, does this have a name? Do we have a name? Um, I don't know. Social media image. Generator. That's intense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, it keeps on expanding. That's funny. It shouldn't. Uh, we can actually. I kind. I think when I was using this library, I had that problem too. No, I'm, I'm going to be good. I'm not going to put a style in the thing. I'm going to. I'm going to do it properly. I'm not going to put style in HTML. <laughs> um, let's do. Uh, um, okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, REM. I uh, did. I did see it get. Oh, not okay. Smaller. I have a feeling that this might be also like, um, because it's like right at the edge. It might be. Yeah. I'd be nice to add some padding. Uh, that's wait. Padding's. I always mix up which ones which. There's one that's outside, one that's inside. The padding is inside. Buffer. Margin is the outside. That's outside, the right? Okay. Let's add some tools padding. Um, so I do this in a really weird way, in that I write the line, and then I go and inspect it in the document and adjust it until it looks good. Which probably is not the best way. Um, And so that's top and bottom, right? Yeah, and then this so should be So that's top side and bottom and padding. This is left. Uh, top get rid of that one zero. zero. And, this and that's right. right. And so VH standing for vertical height and VW standing for vertical width. Or yeah. vertical width? Vertical. Visual, no. visual width. Who knows? Do you know? Place it's probably too much. So if I go back, maybe I'll make the top five, bottom five, and the size 2.5. That way, it's kind of splitting the difference of that a little bit. Um, and then two. That's fine for now. We have some more space. All right. Um, so next, let's go back to here. So let's see. So then we have each of these sliders. So we, have we need to style the value for each of those. And then we need to style the title and then the actual. We can probably play with the actual slider a little Department. bit. Yes and yes. <laughs> the studio yeah. is in the home. <laughs> I guess if you want to call the home a studio. We treat it as our studio. Point. Right there. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of uh, succulents right next to the window. I know the window's like really blown out, but like, yeah. Yeah. We've been trying to graph succulents from other succulents, which has worked surprisingly well, actually. They're surprisingly resilient. Uh, OK, so what we can do next is let's style this input box in this dropdown. Um, input boxes, how do we have this set up right now? Just input type, input. OK, actually, we can just pull the ID. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to style. Uh, I'm trying to remember, this is not. So ID this is, is hashtag. Just, yeah, and this is just regular CSS. Yeah. Okay. So I can't nest. Nope. Okay. No nest. There's only one, so, yeah, only so I'm you can one. remove That's the right. dot tools thing. Yeah. That's what I get. Jekyll's <laughs> like Jekyll's messing with me. Um, SAS SAS though. All right. Is this responsive or how do you make sure your website is responsive to different devices? Do you want to quickly refer back to raster? So yeah. we're using a library called raster.css. 
uh, which handles them. Yeah, this is just kind of a nice like template for grid systems. So what it does is you over here on the left, um, you specify the overall grid and the number of columns and then row. Um, this grid is both the container and the row, um, but you can specify, I think down here when they show, yeah, here's how they basically call. So if you do span with a hyphen and then define how much space you want it to take up, um, that's how you will, yes, pretty cool. Uh, that's how you specify essentially if you want it to be something that uh, shrinks. So if we look at the kind of responsive design section right here, as we make it smaller, eventually it'll wrap these columns. I should wrap them. There we go. So now it essentially snapped. So now these columns right here, <laughs> that's meta. Uh, the columns right here have now basically wrapped and they're wrapping because span hyphen S means small or like mobile devices. And a row means take up the full six widths of the column. Otherwise right here when you see span two, that basically means that the total length of that segment is two. If there's a number and then a second number, so like three, six, that means that the starting position of the span is column three and it is a total of six segments long. Um, so that you can kind of see, see right up here. Um, we've been using this just because it's a little bit more lightweight and it, it's kind of like the bare minimum of responsive. Um, and we basically go back and forth mostly between this and Flexbox, I'd say most of the time. And we'll do some Flexbox stuff in a little bit because we will need to. Um, but yeah, so right now you can see it's kind of working on the right where it was bottom. Oh, actually it's not going to because it's nested in the... You should see them snap once it gets small. Or not, what did we do? The absolute positioning might be messing it up the... Oh, it's probably overriding it. That's fine, we can... Should we not do absolute positioning then? Uh, no, it should be fine. I think we just need to put it in a section instead of at the parent level of that. Uh... I think this is the issue I remember running into a couple of times ago. Um, and instead, if we just take tools and put it in the section, I believe that will not block it from doing the... Or you're totally right, and absolute is just messing with it. Yeah. That's fine. We can figure that out later. Um, At least pull that out. Yeah, and then see right there is when it's snapping to full. Let me double check where we generate stuff. They should go. Yeah. And then scroll down, they should and the images again. are starting right after. Yeah. So that's like the mobile view. Okay, yeah. All right, so yeah, we can do that for now. Uh, make that a little wider so we see everything. All these wonderful things. So, how do we want to do this? So we want to get this guy over here. And we add some padding and put that bar below it. So we probably want the name tag. So we probably want to put these in a div. Or you began doing the text input. So that first, that this first, first guy box here? right there, we were going to style yeah. that first. Text inputs. Text inputs are not my friend. Right here. Um, yeah, so something we could do to make it look a little bit nicer is we can kind of do the like, we can round some corners a little bit. That'll probably be good. Um, probably add a stroke and instead have this color match the background or something like that, make it look more like an input. Uh, so we can make placeholder text like a light gray. Uh, I need to go into like a visual tool to think about it before I code it. Otherwise, I don't can't do them simultaneously. It just doesn't work in my head. <laughs> hmm. So, so let's add some placeholder text. So we have something to work with there. Uh, what is it called? It's not value. It's remember the variable for placeholder text. That's one we're great. Yep. Uh, what do I want to say? We should say something more creative than input text. <laughs> like, uh, text. Here. Okay. That looks Here. Cool. So then, do you are you gonna go for that clear style that you did on Figma? Yeah. Okay. Something like that seems like have you done before? I haven't done this before. This be one. Interesting. To because the styling of the input stuff is not something I do enough to be remote, like fluent in it. Um, 
So I think the background color is kind of okay for now, but it'd be nice to make the border a little bit thicker. Um, let's do... Let's see, so if we do that, that should make it... We're just going to look up input input tags. Let's make sure... Let's go back. Um, forms input styling. Great, yeah, so if we want to do something like... This is not what I'm looking for. Uh, we should style our make our button look a little bit nicer too. But we'll get there. So I know, like something like this, I'm thinking both rounded corners where it's like a little bit lighter. And we can go all out to custom form. Okay. Um, so what do we want to do for that? Let's go back to Figma and see what values we have right now. So I have the fill at the same as the background, and then we just have this like little border. Ooh, some nice border. It's a little bit less aggressive if it's a different gray, maybe. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, so something that I like about Figma Sketch, I think XD does this too, um, is after you make any form of element or asset, you can select it. Uh, if you're in Figma, there's basically design, prototype, and code are these three tabs. If you're here to the right, you can basically just copy the code for that element. Um, so in this case, we already made a class for it. So obviously, like, there's some things I know we don't need, like the absolute and some stuff like that. But really, I just kind of want this part. So I'm going to copy that. Um, and we can just put that there. This is just kind of faster for me to do it more visually and then jump back. Um, so yeah, so we can do that a bit. So I think, though, the height would be nice. I kind of like the height and width of this. We can take this too and then jump back over here. And if we save that, that's probably much bigger than we need. Mm -hmm. um, maybe try 35, a little better, it's a little better. Uh, and then maybe, I think no matter where we are, we're probably gonna want the button always to the right of it, I think, right? Do you think you, we always want this button to be on the right-hand side? Um, probably, unless it's mobile maybe, then we move it. A, what's that, inline block? Wrap is that what that is? <laughs> uh, this is where I sometimes. This is right. I like I'm need to remember. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so let's find out. So we go here. We just want these two things to basically wrap right next to one another. Mm -hmm. So what I remember that being is if we go into our HTML, and we find them. So those are the two. So them right there. We're gonna cut this out quickly. those in a div. And let's see, we want them to basically know where they each are. So we want to pull this select shape to the right, and we want to pull this input to the left, and then have them display in line. So let's go to, oh. Uh, it's, it keeps auto putting in a URL. Yeah, I see that. There we go. And I think the one that we found corners. I think we need more rounded corners. Uh, OK, so I'm just trying to find. Until this year, I was always using Twitter Bootstrap, so I haven't fully gotten my header float left, float right. That seems promising. Oh, um, this, is, this is not Flexbox. What does that mean? Uh, so uh, this part and its elements are within Flexbox. This, are, this is actually what I want, because they're both in the same div. Mm -hmm. So I just want to anchor one to the right of the div and one to the left of the div. Okay. Um, so we're just going to do that, but I want to make sure that I'm doing... So you have to display flex and then... Oh, wait, no, that's unrelated. Oh, I want to see anchor. I think this isn't going to tell me because it's all... It's all about grouping. Yeah. Xbox grouping. Uh, W3C. I forget the syntax. I think it's just like left align or something. Uh, 
Galaxy class absolutely left. Optic style left 100 pixels. Or it's like float left, are you talking about? Maybe that's it. Let's try that. I really don't remember. I'm so used to just like auto completing and being like, oh, it's yeah. that one that I'm like, when I have no auto complete, I'm like, oh. If you consider more options for shapes like star polygon, something, keep going with that. Tab list. Oh, I've never uh, done a tab list. When we started building this project last stream, someone suggested. Um, oh, like using, this. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, someone suggested mm. using like Yeah, that could be um, good too. A more flexible because right now, um, in the code we're that just like cool. doing an if statement checking, oh, is this a square triangle or mm. depending on that. But if we I think in the future if we want to be more flexible to add stuff like star, polygon, etc. Um So that's input and stuff. All right. Um you were saying, what do you say, anchor? Did you say align or anchor? Uh, align. align. Or float. 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 And then let's left see, this right. one we want left. Right. I'm missing something. But we need to tell them to be. Display relative or something like that? Is it? In uh, or display. Isn't it inline block? I keep feeling like it's that. Give it a go. Times they choose to make things camel text and not camel text drives me nuts. Um, reload? Nope. Reload? No, I auto reloaded. Oh, okay. All right, to Google. Um, Just something like um, align, align two elements uh, next to each other. Uh, mm. We want horizontal alignment, right? Long answer display. We do. Yeah, we want to arrange them horizontally next to each other. Yeah, we're doing. We're going for that. Yeah, so like we want one on the left, then we want to put one on the right. So this is the my poor drop down sketch. Yeah. CSS. Um. So this one was vertical align, I think, right? Oh, oh, this is side side to side. That would work. So they do footer icons. They do display flex align items, center. Do you want to give a shot those three lines of code? I is it just because we didn't tell to do flex though? And you do it to the um, the div around the items. Right, so that one, right? So that's tools. Brilliant. Awesome. Ship so, it. Because tools Let's was... do it. Uh, I so made a class for I, that though. I think we need to name or I didn't that make a, I didn't make a class, but we should make a class. Um, what do we want to name it? That is the text, right? It's like, what is it? Uh, no, it's not a poster. What are we calling these? Poster the, tile? I guess this is like the user input part, sort of. Do you want to call that div the user input? Because we're not doing posters. I mean, they're all kind of input, aren't they? Uh, yeah, sort of, I guess. Image? The text and the... I don't know. Image title? <laughs> input wrapper input container. Hmm? Oh, suggestions for the name. <laughs> Oh, nice. Okay, now let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Okay, so then go back to the HTML. I think you had a div already. I wrapping. did, but it doesn't have the name. And we can throw the name in there. Uh, line 26. Input wrapper. A time when you hold shift at the wrong time. Woohoo! Success! Yes. Nice. All right. So we then, now have these beautiful styled. So then I know we want to do it, right? Yeah, as and long then we, as we just we just put a break to force this to the next line. We might not even have to. Huh, Give we'll it a see. shot. I think you might not even have All right, to. So, oh, that's the same div. That would be, that would be sad. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Then we're gonna take. P and label. Cool, okay, and then we'll just style. It's a little wonky. Oh, because it's aligning to center. We want it to align to the corner. This is so messy. Have, do I have we have we tried their scary format everything button? Click it. Wow, they go hardcore. That like, looks cool. They break out everything. I think this was better. This is this is wow. better. Look at how clean and magical this looks now. Okay, it's better. Um, so we're gonna flip 
this one again. And now that I know I can just magically style, I'm going to be less worried about how off this all looks. And then we're going to do the same thing down here. But we're just going to put the color cube outside of it. It's getting there. So we need to anchor, add some padding. So let's see, do we want to do a wrap around everything? I feel like it's so easy to get stuck just doing divs within divs within divs. That, that doesn't always feel like a good decision. But let's see. Um, next, let's take, and getting sparkles. <laughs> OK, so these guys are all wrapped, and they're all still you know, doing the weed break any of the stuff in the meantime. That's good. Um, so we should probably do next is we should add some padding between them, which makes me think we should put oh, and each of these the, in. The color square we wanted to have below the slider, right? Yes, and then I was just blindly well. putting stuff in here. So the color square is. Div color value is the color square. Div color value. Uh, sorry, that one. Uh, color value ID. Okay. So we can pop that below the input and then add a paragraph tag. Actually, for now, maybe we leave it blank because we'd have to write the code to update that paragraph tag. Mm. So do we just leave it there for now? Yeah. Or below the slider? Yeah. So below right the slider? Right. Did you want above the slider? Oh. Did you want to see the thing? Actually, yeah, true. Thing I guess it? so. I don't know. Give some white spaces between the labels and values. Uh, yeah, that's that's what we're gonna do next. But it's so so readable now. <laughs> yeah, should do that. Or I guess because this is what I thought we were. Oh wait, where's oh, the slider? Because we side? added a. Oops. I think I heard delete all the, oh, here I can uh, oh, add that again. That guy. OK, now you can just pick the layer. Sorry, I didn't copy it. I grouped it. It should be right there. I don't know why I missed the dot, but I, OK, I don't know what I did with the dot, but that is what that okay, is. OK, whatever. So this is what we're going for. <laughs> yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah. So, so do we don't you want to put the color square above or below. Above, because right now we don't give a value, right? Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do. I like. I think we should do what we did in the other thing, like you just said. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna just pull a value from one of these other things, just abstractly, and then we can connect it. Um. So basically, we need like this. For color value. Uh, where did it go? Let's so do this label div. So basically, that'll have some color range. Uh, is it better if we do that now or later? Give color like a hex value or this. Let's do that later. Later. Okay. Um, maybe comment that out. And we'll come back to it because we'll have to write some JavaScript. Okay. Um, yes. Let's do some padding. Padding sounds good. And then we should anchor this to the left and anchor that to the right. Yeah. Sounds good. Right. They all have different IDs. The the stuff inside. Yeah. Yeah, we can, or we can just give them all a class, and then so the f that's probably easiest. So or, oh, wait, wait. image wrapper selector, where yeah, is it? Would. Okay, so we have labels. We can so then what we want to do? Um, P float left maybe float right. Sorry. Yes. Don't go. Oh, I think it's because we have the same thing. But for you said the other one's a label, right? Then uh, uh, a uh, mistyping um, L A B for label. Ah. I. Where was the uh, CSS? We were on a, the other tab. We were on that one. Okay, so that. I wonder if there's like a justify content. Is there another value for justify content that we could use? It might not be exactly what we were thinking, but it might it be. It sounds a good place close enough, doesn't it? Uh, so, that's a parent thing, right? Yeah, and then we might want to remove. All right, that's closer. It's not one of them. You can use everything. flex one on your label element, I think. Let's try it. So that's wait, as in float flex? I think just literally like flex one. Like the number. 
Oh ah, success! God. Chicken, chicken! Chicken, chicken, nine, you're oh, a ninja. Comes in ninja. clutch again. Look at that. So in theory, do, wow. I'm not, do I, I don't need these then, right? Or am I gonna break I think we don't need them, yeah. Cause we're doing sparkles and rainbows in the, in the chat. In the chat? <laughs> yeah. There's no, there's no celebration mechanism. We can build that next. We can build a, a sparkle. sparkle we're gonna, we're, we're gonna try to build like some fun tools too. Like this one's a little bit more pra practical, but we definitely want to do like fun stuff like that. All right, let's, um, I'm just gonna add a top and bottom. U, O, bottom. I should be U. All right. Um, Five. That's gonna be probably way too much. Oh wait, wait! Do you I'm need not to doing put something padding. Right? You need to remove padding because you're doing just top and bottom. Oh, sorry. I yep. I think we have more space than that to work with. Right? Do that's okay. Yeah, we can make the let's can we make the text less tiny. Um, is it text size? I think yeah. You might be right. Font size, font size, right? It is font size. I would in my head was just thinking about text. Yeah. And it's also like almost four. Or it is also four characters. So I'm like, that's what that should be. Uh, <laughs> one point five. OK, that's kind of obnoxious. But it's more logical. 1.2. I feel like since hey, they're like. Yeah, we were both thinking 1.2. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm like, all right. And I didn't somehow break these Okay. in the middle. Be still. Ooh, purples. Why? And the let's go button. Oh, okay, well, this is all the JavaScript. Okay, stuff, so, so let's let's generate one. Just can, we, so can we make the we let's go it. button real quickly? Just be in a happier place. Oh, uh, styling was. Yeah, I, I just need I need some breathing room. Is it? Wait. Yeah. JSX, you need the slash, right? So this, you don't need the slash. I think so either one will work, and you don't really have to worry about okay, it. Okay, it's it's down there. Uh, oh, change the text to generate, right? That's what we really want. Change the text to change. for the let's go button. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's go so peppy. <gasps> let's we should go. Add confetti to the button. Oh okay. yes. <laughs> Actually, okay. So if we finish, okay, we have to be somewhere <laughs> at four today. So no, that's today. <laughs> yeah, but um, that's so sad. Depending on how far we get, we can go and add confetti at like, the end. I That'll be fun. <laughs> gen eight gen. That's not how you spell here. Uh, G e n e r a t o. -R. Yep. There we go. Okay. All right. Or we just want gener generate, right? Yes. Generate makes more sense. Where did I just put my mouse? Bam. Cool. Pick color, generate thing. Boom. We have things. It's so okay. we are. Um, Bam. A little bit of padding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's do, oh, you know what we could do? That would be nice. Yeah, we're gonna do this thing. We're gonna make these numbers. This is a really pedantic thing, but I think it's super cool. Um, so if we go to this guy and his lovely font that he made called Inner. Um, I didn't know this was a thing, but there's these font feature settings that you can do that, yeah, these things, okay. So uh, there's different ways to specify them for each browser. But basically, if you turn on, for example, uh, Liga, if you give it a 1, it'll style this type of arrow in text as this type of arrow. And it'll like properly center the multiplier. If it's an x, it'll properly oh, center it and stuff like that. But the one, I, subtle. the one I really, oh, this is all like insanely subtle. And like most people would probably never realize it. But I know it's there, so I want to add it. <laughs> um, I really like what they do with the numbers. If you turn on SSO one, and then they have another one that does makes zeros. Wait, sorry, can we go back to the proper zero? Kind of missed what it does. Yeah. So do you, this is like the native font zero. Okay. And then this is an. Sure, it does look does look good. <laughs> right. And well, then I can't really. <laughs> uh, it also means you can do like O's have thing. Which one are you adding? We can. Uh, I wanted to add just the O one, right. just because we have the numbers incrementing. Um, that could be kind of nice. Cool. Let's try it. Let's try it. Uh, so from what I remember, it's just adding. I think it's just adding. Do you add it to like that to the HTML? Uh, all we should need to do is add it to the like HTML. Um, I've added it to body too, but we'll put it here. Uh, and in theory, so yeah, the number has changed. Because yeah, I think it's working. Because um, then see, he also puts it up here. For his font variant settings. 
And then the other one I want to do was the lovely little zero one. Um, and then basically you can just list these as a string. Wait, did you need the whole, oh, like that? Yeah, and it should. That's it. Um, so basically for each of these elements is just looking for if it's a one or a zero for being on or off, and that's it. What is flex? Oh, can I give it a go? Can I describe flex? Uh, so flexbox is a responsive tool that, so like I think we're, us we're only using it at the bottom where it says flex one. Um, so we're using it for all of these right here. Yeah, in a nutshell, it helps make a website responsive. So if you load a site on a phone, it'll say take maybe something that's a three column layout and condense it down to a two column layout. Yes, the CSS trick ones. Yeah, that one's good. Okay, uh, just very Sorry. quickly, we'll we'll paste in the link that chicken chicken. Oh, <gasps> uh -oh. what happened? Yeah, I wish it's funny you can't just. Okay, there it. we go. So. So it's similar where you usually you and it basically specifies the order in which they're displayed. So whether they're displayed in a row or they're displayed in a line, at what point one of them will snap down to the next row if you have a smaller screen, oh. um, that type of thing. But yeah, it's super helpful. Um, we need to, I need to learn a lot more about it so I can use it more effectively. Yeah. But it depends. I think there's also like another the the other popular CSS styling uh, method is a uh, grid, mm. is my understanding, and there are. Oh yeah, so I have no idea. I don't know the details of what, but like flex is one technique, and I think you can basically do everything in either style. But maybe sometimes it's better to do depending on the project. Um, we don't need this anymore. No, that can go away. I'm just happy my zeros are crossed. Um, we want to style like this that. button too, yeah. Yeah, let's make the button more of a button. So maybe okay. we hop back over to so to the button sketch and CSS is Sigma. submit button. Oh, you want to go Figma first? Go for it. Oh, we should just make the button look like a. Oh yeah, because then you can copy the text from. Uh, yeah, so maybe Figma, we or the CSS from Figma. So let's. What did I round it at? I chicken, chicken round. said you can use grid anyway if you want a bidirectional layout method. Hmm. I didn't know that. Cool. Let's add. Yeah, just like a hot. No, it's not a super nice green. That's a little aggressive green. It's kind of. It's like the red or. Yeah. It's softer. Yeah, something like that is good. For now, let's just make it a large gray button. Um, I don't want the position obsolete again. So we have you said it's submit button. Yeah. Submit button is the idea. What? What do we do? We must have messed up the uh, element somewhere. Submit button, max value button. Why? Oh, wait, I thought that fixed it. I did too. <laughs> What's their little error code say? <laughs> wait, I put, I, put the, I put the break right in the middle of the... <laughs> Sorry. That's my fault. Wait, boys, the button's still in the button. Button, okay, because that should go between there. Type button submit. Submit type button. Something just broke. Um, uh, let me do it. I think it's okay though, actually. Oh, wait, no. No, it's not. No. I feel like there's a missing, it just feels like a missing apostrophe situation. Input's not closed. There, it's all fixed. It's a button! Whoa, that button. Okay. It's an aggressive button. Did you want like a break here? Is yeah, let's throw a break in. Yeah, I think we just put it, the, we just put that code in the wrong spot. Okay, let's format this. Woo! I okay. love, that's like the best part now for me of Glitch is just the formatting. And it just feels nice. <laughs> it does. This is actually much faster than I. It's pretty good. Okay, so what do you... What, All right, what's it? It's just this like clicked. So it'd be nice to do like hover active and the uh, complicating okay, so we should not do that now. <laughs> There's so many other things that we need to do to make the design look date for it. And let's do... Uh, um, what was it called? Active? 
active the clone. You are right. Okay. So for that, um, for now, just for the state of keeping this simple, let's just like do the exact same thing, but make it green. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> and uh, actually, we can write that thing so it says regenerate. Yeah. yeah like, let's let's. Uh, I'm really. I don't know why I'm so. Uh, it's not. Let's not pick my colors. It's just. It's not just color though. Isn't font color a thing? I think. Okay. Okay. Let's just. Color is F F F F F. Oh. Three, three, one, two, three. What? Whoa! I seriously? think you had one F. Uh, Was you, I missed? you had five. I think you had five. But it's not case. Okay. Like if they made that case sensitive. That is What's the button state active for again? I forgot. Uh, I when think you click? active is when you press it. So it's Whoa. this. Whoa. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Okay. It's the... So that's a very minimal thing. The only thing that could be kind of nice is add a. Wait, you didn't even default. It's like a universal default for buttons. Oh. Um, it just is like all it's doing is toggling the shadow. So do you need the active part on? Add that. Yeah. Um, and this technically the button's not changing, so we don't really need any of that. That's just redundant. Mm. And we at least have that. Um, then, the other thing that was kind of nice sometimes is you can do like these nice. It's just this, from what I remember. Um, we commented it out. Let me see, like just the difference. So that's immediate. Five seconds. Yeah. So it should be slow. Five point three, four. Four. Sure. Ooh. 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 <laughs> so anyhow, this is just like a, it's kind of ridiculous, but it's fun. Yeah. The other thing is like, you can have some text and yeah, Ooh. let's do canvas styling. How are we going to do that? Because we also need to, um, add text that doesn't exist yet. It's almost like a div on top of the canvas. That oh, that's same, interesting. And it's opac opacity zero. And then it has opacity like 0. 0.3. Create a hidden class variable. Is there a dog party? What's going on? There's a dog party. I'm gonna grab some chips and house. Oh, there's the camera. Roasted garlic hummus. Okay. Um, my current suspicion is as it, and we add a then no hide. Like instead of display hidden, we then have it as display, and then we just add a transition so it doesn't have a long fade over effect. But yeah, I'm going to grab so, some water. Yeah, you want to start some of that, and then I'll be right back. Water. Okay, switching spots. <sighs> okay, so we are generating the canvas. Ooh, what can we do? You, um, that little bit of CSS with the um, transition <laughs> 0.4 seconds in the submit oh, button section. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. So Reason then being, you hover. want to avoid silly situation like animation blow up right after mouse went out of the element. Oh. You, I, I'm that's a great it. point. Oh my god, that's why if the poster generator one's messed up right now. What is it? You just helped me debug another project. Thank you. <laughs> that's fantastic. Thank you, Jake and Chicken. Um, <laughs> if I'm understanding correctly, so like uh, by it being applied to like the parent element, Mm -hmm. um, it's being applied for all of the hover active and all the other states. So when you move in and out, it'll apply at the same, like there's going to be a hover in and a hover out. Whereas if it's only upon active, it's only I think on the hover in. And then it also wouldn't apply to like the, if we change a state when it's being pressed, it wouldn't apply otherwise. So it makes this transition smoother for when you're going in and out. Whereas otherwise, um, Cause when if we you're, slowed if it down, did you see how it was doing the layering? Where it was like transitioning the button and then it was kind of transitioning the text. Yeah. Up right like like that. I don't yeah. Uh, uh. I think so. I don't know. That's cool. At least in the little uh, example that you copy and pasted this from, they put it in the main rather yeah. than in the hover state. It's funny, the colors that I think will look good generated are not the colors, I think. Right here, it could be helpful for us to actually add, and over the color block, to add more of a transition. Because right now we're just showing like the raw, uh, was it the HSL 
mm -hmm. value, but then we're manipulating the heat, tone it down a little bit. Yeah, so maybe as you, oh, that's the thing, that's gonna be a lot of API calls, because remember we do it as a fetch call right here. Oh, that's fine, not a big deal. Let's do the other thing you were saying first, and then we can come back to it. Um, and less than 0.3 seconds will be more tolerable. Yeah, let's do that. What are we at, three? Oh, we're at four. Yeah, um, the colors look good. They don't really necessarily line up. So for example, the hue color right here is this light green, and then here's the palette that we get. And um, you just don't see the light green there. So see, we're, we want to try to see if we can make it so that the slider, like as you slide it, it kind of more. So right now, okay. So right now in the code, we're creating the canvas element. Mm -hmm. We're context, which is all of the decorations and stuff. a modern style frame yeah mm. and then and um is. which is this right here this div right here and i'm wondering like should we create like a div element in here as well i just like because then uh, i see because you if you create the div it's messy um okay So you can okay, so, do that. so you can definitely add a class on hover. Hmm. I think what the other workarounds to that would be. Can't HTML. You know, canvas um, overlay text. on hot. So they have the div, the label div. So the canvas is absolute positioned, and then they just, okay, so mm. I don't know if this is going to work in our case. Hmm. Overlay text, uh, um, overlay div on image on HTML canvas, they're all using the container position is absolute. Okay, this might be possible to do right here. So I'll create a div that the canvas and the div overlay mm -hmm. are in. I think this is going to work right here. So because, oh wait, container position is absolute. Okay, so what if we make a, can we put the canvas inside of, it's a, uh, nest the canvas in one div? Yeah. And um, then can it align itself to that div and have that div act as the container for the canvas? Because then if each of them have their own, it would still be responsive. What do you think? I can try. So bar try. that example nested. seems the most plausible so far. Actually, so I'm, gonna, I, I'm gonna shut this blind so you're not being washed out. Oh, uh, it helps. Is that helping? Oh yeah, it helps a lot. Great. It's a little better, right? Yeah, this is this is like significantly better. Yeah. Let me turn on the light too. And then that creates the same problem. <laughs> we wrap the canvas in div in a container element, which is position relative. 
Then the canvas and div are set to position absolute. Okay, this sounds worth a try. It kind of sounds like it might solve what we're thinking. Okay. So we're creating the canvas element right here. Mm -hmm. We also want to create a bar container. Uh oh equals create uh oh I can't spell I can't spell <laughs> well, welcome to my world uh, div so we'll create a div <laughs> yeah the chip snacks are kind of the thing to snack. is that a chip that looks chipish right yeah that's a chip, chip. I'll go with chip <laughs> they're very good to snack on they're quite handy and then we're gonna also create a div each time. Oh yeah, so we're creating two divs. So this one's going to need a class of like container. I forget how you add, I think it's just like this container dot style and then you can pass in. Oh really? Yeah, so JavaScript set style of element. Oh, okay, so element dot style dot Okay, so element dot set attribute. Oh, oh, here set specific. So element dot style dot whatever the CSS attribute is. Um dot position equals relative and then so this is for the container and then uh, both canvas dot style dot position is going to be absolute and div dot style dot position is absolute and then I think we want this container to have uh, a width and height mm. so wasn't it the same as the image though yeah but or I think you... because it's the relative container that the image and the the canvas and the div are being like are, are inside of that mm. container we want to make sure it takes up the appropriate space that it's supposed to take up on the screen Gotcha. I'll, I'll run this because I know we're writing a lot of code without like making sure that it's all running. So yeah. this is it. And we'll confirm. Okay, they're all generating on top of each other right now. Oh, actually, wait. <clears throat> that could be really helpful. <laughs> What's up? Uh... Can you go to the go to the, the HTML? Oh, wait, are we in the HTML? No. I have a way that might fix that in the HTML, which would stop us from needing to create a different fix later. If you go to the container where we're setting, yes, okay. Um, can you apply the class to the C tag to the C element instead? So have that become the canvas section. Really? Instead of the div. Because ideally, each if each of those objects was just created as a C tag instead, that would be splendid. Absolute. Aren't those what's? <laughs> if you click one, it downloads all. That would be scary. Ooh. 
What's up? I was just contemplating what would happen if you would add a blur to all of the shapes so that they would feed the the edges of them would taper and fuse together and instead you'd get like a Gaussian blurred gradient. Mm. That's not really a now task, but that was just a... Yeah, that'd be cool. Mm. This is not doing what I thought it would do. Oh wait, oops, we're appending the canvas still. So we're not even seeing this take, like we're not seeing that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing nothing. Wait, so what? Mm, not fully following. Um. Oh, empty divs. Oh, I know what I did. Okay. So or you're passing through one, but you're so not. when I was appending initially, I was appending the canvas. So we were just like seeing what we already mm. like. What I need to append is this container. And what I actually need to do is I need to add the canvas and the div in the div so into, that it's the, into container. the container. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'll do it right here. So container dot app dot append child the canvas, and we'll do the exact same thing to append the div, and then the container is getting added. Um, what happens right now? So there's the text right there. If they're still appending all on top of each other, though, I think it's uh, if you do inline block, I should do one after another. I think. Yeah. So they're all overlapping right okay. now. And that just comes down to this, I think. So our, our, maybe what would be good is to inspect these and see what is happening right now. Um, yeah, so we're getting absolute positioned um, div and canvas. So they're all getting placed on top of each other. What happens if we remove the absolute positioning? Okay, so if we remove the absolute positioning, it's just going to place them all in order. So now we have the canvas and then the div, but what we want is we want that div to be right on top, right? Can't we just translate it? So we need to do display, we need to display that div on hover anyway. So could we translate it over the image that it's being hovered on? Um, maybe, yeah. Uh... I don't know if that very well may be a messy way of doing it. Oh, wait, can we absolute position the div? Mm. So that one's like mm -hmm. set in stone where we want it to be. Mm -hmm. So then they're aligning to each other through that div, but the div is still flexible. I have no clue. Hey. Oh, wait. No. Oh, wait. Yeah. How come this first one doesn't have it? What? That's kind of weird. That's very random, I feel like. Yeah, it's always the ones after that have it. And also, if we're downloading the images right now, I think if we click, we shouldn't see click download, yeah. Because that's a separate thing, it's not the canvas. Mm. I'm not super sure why that would be. So we're creating the div. The div is absolute. Oops. I'm wondering if it, we can just force it. Like maybe it's behind for some reason. For just the first one? Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Is it Z index like this? Oh my goodness. I think it's Z, isn't it Z hyphen? I think it's Z hyphen index. Maybe not. That was in it.
Hmm. Look at that. It's on. So the 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 first one. So the div absolute is on the first is on there for the first image, like the first section. Okay. <laughs> different problem. Different problem. That's okay. Um, can we skip this hover thing? Or yeah. Can we do. Let's skip the hover thing and just get them in a grid. There's one other thing too, I think, right? So basically, we're going to remove this. And I'll leave this kind of where it is because um, we can come back to it. So that we're creating a div, mm. um, or we're containing a container. I want to give the container a class so we can uh, okay. grab it. Div uh, JavaScript add class to div or any element dot class name. Okay, so we just say dot class name equals something. So container dot class name equals um, a social image. A social canvas. <laughs> All right, we'll confirm that this. If we click inspect. It should have that class. It does. Okay, so now we can go and style however we want that cool. class. So now we can do the flexbox stuff again. Social canvas. So what are you thinking, flex uh, or display? As a joke, I just want to say flex one, but I don't, that's not going to do what we want it to do. Display flex, mm -hmm. and then also. Uh, I think this should just uh, be in line flex. block. And it should be fine. Or there's flex direction too, right? Yeah, but I think by default it'll go the way we want. Okay, so display because we want to go like left to right and then top to down. Or what do you want to do? Display inline block. No, I think we don't. We need. I thought we needed flex display. And then I thought inline block was the other element that we needed. Well, because like inline block can be a flex style, right? In that. Mm hmm. Let me try. It's not going to do anything because I think the canvases are too big. So we also have to make the canvases 50%. OK, we can start by that. It's based on how it's laid out. I think we probably always want the canvases to be probably like roughly a quarter of the screen ratio. Maybe a third. Oh, is there a way to do percentages of the of the current width of the screen? Yeah, that's the uh, VH and VW. The vertical height and vertical width is the high, total height of the screen and its pixel density. Oh, OK. I'll try typing it. Uh, width is going to be? I think because these are pre-generated, we need to do, uh, it should be fine if we just do max width. And then we set height to auto, I think. Wait, max width would make it take the whole div, right? We want it to take like half, so there's like two next to each other. Yeah, so you could do max hyphen width. Okay. And then like colon, do like uh, 30 vertical VW. And then if we generate them, that should constrain it to. Well, it squishes it. That's beautiful. Um, we can try just regular width, but then if we do height, we can do this auto or the same. Oh, I, oh, I reload I know, I do that all the time. Oh, we can just do, if you just make it 30. Oh, but we want it to be a... Uh, we can do something like 40%. It's still going to squish it, I think. We can also just call it like just be like two fifty five because it's a, is it a square right now? It's not quite a square, right? Mm, no. It looks like it's getting squished, huh? It is getting squished. Yeah. We had this issue last time too, so we had to calculate the image ratio, and we set the width as being like forty, and then we just 
calculated the ratio for what the height was to keep the aspect ratio the same. Okay, you go for that. Um, we literally just Googled it. Oh, we're like okay. ratio converter, and we just took we just took the element and. Oh, that was the pen bit that broke. I was like, I was like what is this? Okay, um, so I think for that, all we need to do, um, just since we can always clean that up more later, but for now, if we just do like uh, 250, like 150 pixels, that's probably smaller than we want. 250. Um, and then, so last time, there's gotta be a more elegant way of doing this, and if someone has a suggestion, I'd love to hear what it is. Um, Wait, we can do this in our heads, right? What's a ratio of four to, oh, four to three, right? 800 to 600? Four to three? Yes, right? four, 800 to 600. Great. So, why am I going in there? I need to be here. Um, so then we could just, do like 40 vertical width, and then I think, or not vertical width, but what you're saying, percent. Yeah. Wait. Oh, those two just happened to look very similar. Okay. These three were all such a similar yeah. palette. I was like, is that one image? I was like, what did it do? Okay. Um, and then now we just need to add some padding between them and then wrap them. Okay. And that might actually be a good place for us to almost pause. What time's the thing? Four. Four. Okay. So we got like half I keep, an I keep thinking three. I think in my head. let's do this and then add the sparkles. Okay. Nice, nice way to yeah, to yeah. end it. Um, to, what do you yeah. Sorry, I was trying to. <laughs> we were just talking about. Uh, so we need to display each of the objects one right next to one another. Yeah. So are we going to do flex or are we going to try something else? Uh, last time we did flex. And flex okay. was fine. So you do display flex and then is it not this? Uh, I don't see it. We need to, if we should go to the page that uh, Chicken Chicken 9 shared because that. Uh oh, I lost that page. Uh, if you Google Flexbox CSS, the website is, I think, CSS Tricks and it's like their how to guide. Yeah. Um, if you scroll down. Display flex, flex direction is what I thought row, right? Yeah, we want, but we don't need that. We need the one that flex tells. Flex wrap. Yes, I think we need flex wrap. Because we need to tell it not to go in a row, but we need to tell it to uh, put each object next to one another, and then when it runs out of space, go to the next row. Flex wrap, wrap. Ah, yes, see that, <laughs> that link. <laughs> I will forever internalize the it CSS flex, handy. flex box wrap. It so came in handy, chicken chicken. Oh, I didn't see, did you add it? Um, it's not working, and I think I know it's because we need to apply it to the the grid, the, out, the outermost div, yeah? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So. So we can just make a new, it's canvas a, section. So um, this needs to go in canvas section. Have we used that before? I don't think we've used canvas section. Okay. Wait, what's the other one? Oh, social canvas. Yeah, which is the individual ones. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Beautiful. First try and find set. Hold on, hold on. Go back to the CSS tricks. What did, what did we do and what are we? There's clearly something we're just missing. Oh, wait. There's a chance that I. Oh, oh. no. Is there? Yes, I'm curious about it. Oh, yes, please, we're curious. Yeah, go for it. 
we're very, very, we'd very much like to know. And I think it might be because of this right here. Let me try removing this. Oh, maybe that's what's constraining it? No, well, but that's just, it's not going to wrap them with that, though, because it's just going to make them all full bleeds. Yes, true. Uh, what is the name of the element that contains the images? Uh, that is the... So if we inspect one of these, uh, remind Let's myself. Find out. So the, the, they're actually canvases. Uh, we've, we've been just selecting it by doing a uh, social canvas and then selecting the canvas element within the C, in, for the CSS. Actually, I just changed a piece of code. I'm curious what it is. Oh. I mean, that's not wrong. It's almost right. Uh, can you give the display grid to your social canvas? OK, this is closer. And grid template columns repeat autofill your minimum size PX. We'll give it a try. So that's to the same one, right? Yes. I'm not quite sure if we're supposed to have that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He said just coming up. Cool. Your minimum size. Oh, I was just doing like loosely, like it's like 250 ish. Oops. Not in. <laughs> Let's see what's happening. Oh. Oh, cool. Okay. Whoa. This is much closer. What's happening? Oh, the canvas itself, because it's it's still 800 PX, the social canvas behind it is 250. So we would probably need to, oh, because I want. Oh, that's interesting. Because we want to keep the canvas the same size so that when you click on it, the it image exports is at that size. still exported as 800, gotcha. 600. Uh, you have some fixed width and height on the canvas. Yes, yeah, yeah exactly that. Yeah. Hmm. What else can we... Yeah, so this is working, I think, as expected. Yeah, 250p, 250px by 600px. And let me look at what we just added. Yeah, so the, the 600px is still Yeah, we want to keep the aspect ratio. You can give them the aspect. But with the height. Wait, really? How do you give them an aspect without the width? With, but with, and height. Mm, we're getting close. I'm just a little confused now. Oh yeah, let me go. Things when you click these right now. Are they full size? They are full size still. So yeah, I sort of, uh, my thinking is that you can just like, let's see, so we're, I actually, maybe I should look into what this does. I'm not actually quite sure what this does. Like what is grid template columns? Can also give chicken chicken edit access to this. 
<laughs> chicken, chicken, you can go to town. I don't know if you oh, want there's so to many. chicken, chicken, but you could. Oh, that's kind of a helpful diagram. Here, I'll go up to that one. Repeat. Here's an example for that aspect. All right, we're looking. Example and aspect ratio. Scenario one, let's look at the scenario. Just the element inside needs to have an aspect ratio. Oh, you can just define it. Okay. It seems like we want to basically, on the canvas, give it an aspect ratio. I think that makes more sense. So if we add that to the... The social canvas is the parent for the canvas element. Right, so if we add it to that? To or, here, right here. I think so. I don't think we want that. Whoa. Like this might be exactly what, let's see. Oh, so but we're social just not calling canvas, Wait, social canvas is 320. I wonder why it picks. Let's go back to this. Span as many columns as. So the other thing we can do that's probably e easier than figuring this out right now would be to just center the um, canvas one, like one on each, like not side by side, just one. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Let let's. Do we want to? I think we should before we do that we should briefly tap Weiwei, Wei, because she helped me figure this out last time. Wei Wei. Let me just hold up. Wei Wei. Uh, do you remember from the poster generator mm -hmm. how you got it? So instead of displaying them all one after another, they displayed in a grid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was wrap, flexbox wrap. Is that it? Direction roll this way. I'm gonna try. Okay, that's legit. Uh, wait, wait, just found the. We found the example from before. Okay. I want to try. You're messaging it. Yep. Yeah, oh, you could. Do you just want to put it in glitch too? I should be logged in. Invite to edit? Yeah, we don't know which person. CSS? Yeah. Whatever, I, I, I think. I'm putting it to the fairy box. It's my own code. Yeah. Yeah. Can we get it to, like, 
Like if there's more space, it should snap three. She put it right here. No, I don't think. Oh, this one. I think that's what we need. So this we apply that to the div, the container of the div. And then this to that I don't. Uh oh. It's just confused because of the grid column layout thing. I'm just trying to save some bits. Mm -hmm. Oh, these are different dimensions too, you can see, right? Yeah, the main thing I want to figure out is like, I want it, I think it should snap, like if you have more canvas screen area, you want it to snap out to like three images wide. If you have less, you want it to snap into like Yeah, for vertical width. And then so one, unit and then vertical width. 1.0 or something like that? Yeah, but reversed. So like one. Oh, is, is it this? The VW? Like no, no, no. You had it right. Just you wrote the unit and then the number. It's one VW. Yeah. We can, we can still fix that. I think it's okay like that too. I mean, you can see there's a little bit of spacing on the left side. So, uh, okay, how can we... Because like basically I said social, I said the canvas is gonna take up whatever space it can mm -hmm. inside the div that it's in. Mm -hmm. The div that it's in is gonna have a width of 40, height of 100, or height of Watto, whatever that width needs to be. Those still look squished though, aren't they? No, these are, these are normal now, okay. yeah. Uh, how hard is it going to be for us to make it, like, if there's more room, it's three, if there's less width, it's two. Oh, it won't. Well, it never percentage. will percentage, yeah. We can, uh, we can, we can, uh, actually, it might make sense to go, uh, give it, like, it's like what we want. Because okay. then it'll actually react correctly for the bottom part, too. Mm. Like, I, I don't even know what. Just do, like, 120 is. PX or something. We squish this. Yep, they'll all be Great. one. Yep, that's all I. And then if we keep making it even wider, they'll just tile out. Oh, this is a bit weird. Look at this. Yeah, I know. We need to fix that. <laughs> How come this though? Do you know? I don't know why that's on the left. My guess is it's a it's an RSS padding thing we used to do. Okay. In the uh, raster file. So for now, I'm going to comment all of this. Oh wait, this is going to break it. Yay things. The problem is that this size that you won't be able to see the text. Yeah, what if we do 250? 250 is a friendly size. Oh, whoa. Oops, the text is not dynamic. Oh, no, oh, no, no, it is, it is. But this is too much text for the font, the font text size that we use. Because we use like some crazy high text um, size, like 155. But uh, why is it? And if you have more space, it starts adding them. This looks a little awkward. Also right here. What do you think? Yeah, we can. And we should make them look a little bit more interesting. Yeah. Um. section to make it have some nicer hierarchy. We can probably bold some titles. I want to style the drop down, but I haven't styled the drop down, so we need to look at that too. Yes. Type. Yeah. So yeah yeah. It's like oh. it's type colon. Yeah yeah yeah. It's oh, like sweet. weird, but Perfect. it's pretty easy. 
So like type uh, of range, type being range or something like that, right? Yeah, because our sliders are just our sliders our range. Regions, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll put it up here. Okay. So. We, and then. Uh, the input range. Input range like that. I don't know if you need the quotes. You may need the quotes. I think you don't need the it quotes. Didn't tell me. Uh, it doesn't look like. Oh, the type input. equals. Oh, I didn't know you could call it the. Oh, there we see. You can just call it global type. It's interesting. Like that. With a hundred percent. Okay, so that didn't do that didn't do anything. Well, um, ellipsis, a different shape or something. That's weird. Okay, it might just be this. Which type equals range? I might be selecting. Oh. Input wrapper. Input. Input type range. Oh, these are not in the. They're input not in the wrapper. <laughs> Everything else is just not. There we go. Hey. <laughs> cool. Is that okay with us? How would? Yeah. Yeah, but I think so. Can you see what some of the styles were on that one site? Yes. It could be nice just to make like these look a little bit, a little bit friendlier. It's yeah. this one right here. What's the one below it? Wall. Okay. 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 Hold on. Let's, but let's this doesn't at... make sense for a circle. No, that's kind of weird. What are some of the other ones? That's what I want to see because people usually just do clever things with these and. They're not things that I would necessarily know are options here. Oh, that color picker. Oh, I see you're controlling everything for the one at the top. Hmm. It's kind of a cute little styling tool. Yeah, a styling tool for the for styling the tool. styling tool. <laughs> That's like. Styleception. That's pretty good. Cool. Okay. That's actually kind. Of, that'd be kind of an interesting tool in there. Okay. Um. What do you think? I'm thinking of what other visual stuff we should do. But my brain is running slow. Um. So I think next to do's are the input box on mobile. We should anchor to the left and add some padding between it and the circle. Uh, we should make the color. We should probably bold the like titles of each section, and we should style the drop down so it doesn't look default, and clean up the button. Okay, you said a lot. Yep. <laughs> Let's switch. You want to add it to the readme? Just stuff last time. Cool. Yeah, because I don't Scroll think we're going to, we're down. not going to. Yeah, so this is some stuff we were talking about last time, but you might want to add a CSS one. Cool. Let's do that. Oh, we're going to add confetti. That was the other thing, was the confetti. There's a there's no one watching right now, so I mean it doesn't really know. Okay. Let's find us so they see us stuff. Uh, and then it's way way. Um, realized that actually I think we need a dash before the bracket I'm not sure well we will find out 
Oh, super broken. Space. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's just. Um, so uh, we have the responsive bit working. We have our little sliders. We have our raster stuff in that added, and they nice. they respond. Um, we loosely styled. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking it could be nice to do something similar to the the slide generator, not the slide generator, the arena of these. Mm -hmm. uh, and we found this kind of interesting slider. Oh, this you can use to style the slider. Mm -hmm. And change some of stuff around. I agree. In the, in the sense, yeah. Or for fun, we can add confetti. Yeah. Confetti? Okay. Uh, is this a, a button generator confetti thing or a? Yeah. Uh, we can probably find a code that we had for animal text or friend NEA. My brain is slowing down. And then, yeah. Anyway, jump in. Just on the Oh, you're looking for where it is? Yeah. Uh, it's on the left, right? It says, uh, that was pretty decent confetti from what I remember, right? Yeah, we can. This is another tool we built a while ago to be kind of funny about how sometimes you get people saying, oh, let's do a friend NDA. They're telling you something about their company, so we built a friend NDA generator. But we want to pull the confetti effects, so and add that to when you click generate, so that way you have a nice little glitch-inspired confetti situation going on. So new file, confetti.js. Do I need to place it in any folder or? Uh, just put it in public. Like uh, no forward slash. I don't think. So it's the it's the parent. Like this. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then just call it in the style sheet. Let me in the next file. All right. Um. Uh, then what? If we jump back, we should look at how we call it from the button, right? Isn't that pretty much it? Yeah. So. Let's look at the sent file. Yep. And then I think it's just, oh, conf drop confetti ID. Yep. In theory. Uh, the existing ID, and we'll just replace it with submit button. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not trying to. No. I'm just saying what is on my tired brains. Confetti JS number fifty seven. It says can find variable. Uh, 
because we I think we're missing something. Mm -hmm. Start button. Um. You did like what three twenty? You start walking three thirty. Yeah. Just do walk around. Why is it? I thought that was the only place we called it. You know what, let's try mm. ignoring the the CSS for this one, but let's just switch this out for a bit. Uh, it's, I don't think I'm going to let you code that out based on how far I'm I see. Um, then let's copy this and then switch that out with start button. No. From what I remember, I think it's because I think last time we implemented this, we had to tell it the canvas area in which it displayed. Right, like we had to tell it, oh, display in this container. Yeah. And I'm curious if. So it's in the div called content. We don't have one, I don't think. There's one here. Right, I mean, in um, there's not a content div in. But. It, the confetti button isn't referencing it, it's just sitting inside one. Do we call the button anywhere else? Like you go to the bottom, it's just we're just calling the one script, right? There's nothing in input output that's related to the confetti button, I don't think. No. Hmm. Do we add confetti to the to do list? <laughs> No. No. We finish it now. Okay. Today's business is today's business. Okay. 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 <laughs> oh, ID canvas. Is that it? Well, that might be. Let's see if the confetti. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well. That might be too early, but. <laughs> that was a very um, confident. Let's see. Nope. Still can't find variable. Oh. I think you can check the list of event listeners of your button. Hmm. I don't know what's being when it's being. Uh, 
Uh, okay, let's try that. What do we do? So in the confetti JS, mm -hmm. um, can we see when we're calling, like where do we have the event listeners for the button object as it's being clicked? Like where are we tracking the click? Oh, on your website. Wait, I just realized a thing. Uh, this is jQuery. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have jQuery in the project. Oh, go to the site and inspection mode and see. I got you. Okay. Chicken, chicken. We're trying it out. Give me a second. Let me add the. Oh, it's the jQuery. Not, ah, I see what you're saying. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Hey. hey. <laughs> okay. Well. Um, hey. Okay. We now need to. Uh, Jake. So it's doing it in this canvas, which is like above. So I think we just need to replace canvas with. Uh, can we put this ID canvas class? Can we put it right here under, sorry, where's the second C tag? That's what I'm trying to look for. Uh, can we put it, oh, can we just put it here under that class instead? Or assign it to the class? Yes, thank you, chicken chicken. <laughs> You're like, the one file you forget to migrate or reference. Um, Because then that should constrain it just to the part where the where they're being generated, maybe. Uh, Confetti JS is still trying to. Confetti JS is trying to um, grab a canvas instead of just using the ID. Can in Confetti JS can we just tell it to grab like a div labeled ID instead of a canvas labeled? No, the whole confetti is drawn on canvas. Mm -hmm. HTML5 canvas. Gotcha. So. Okay, that's an interesting, different challenge. Um, um, there was one thing we did here, which I believe was like, yes, defining the canvas. So let's copy that and paste it in style.css. We can delete this, right? Yeah, it's just reference. And then put this canvas right back here and see what happens. Hey! Confetti! Nice. You know what would be cool? Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> what would be cool? The color of the confetti matches the colors used on, on the canvas. And that is a job for the to-do list on another day. <laughs> That's what I think. Can we add that to the to-do, though? That would be super cool. Yeah. I don't... We might also want to stop confetti button because it's just going to rain confetti forever. I thought the loop, really? I thought it timed out. Um, we can probably do that. Oh, go to confetti.js. Uh -huh. There's a reset button. We can just trigger that same function after a certain amount of time. Right? Yes. Isn't confetti fun? I think confetti's fun. I think more, more of the internet should have confetti. Well, Although to your usability point earlier about the transition fade of the button, we should be cautious with how much of the confetti we use, but I think more of the internet could have joyful confetti in it. Okay, so there's this stop confetti function. Where should I um, call it? it at the end and then just put a delay. So it only confettis for like, you know, five seconds or something, probably three seconds. So where's the confetti being drawn? It's drawn here. Here we go, start confetti. Okay, so go to the end of that function. End like here? Yeah, go down one line and just call stop confetti. And in theory, that should be. Is that ever going to? Sorry, to add a delay. How do I add a delay? Uh, right, this is not Arduino. Um, 
Uh, just add, add delay JavaScript. I think it's just delay in Millis from what I remember. So it's just delay and then open bracket. Set timeout. Oh, yeah, sure. Let's do that. <laughs> Confetti forever. I know. I know. There's a lot. We're, we're working on the timeout. <laughs> Perfect, just do that. Copy the whole thing. Yep. That's exactly what we need. So, um, mm -mm. well, we can put it in there, but let's put it outside of it. Like, like here? let's put it completely outside of all the functions. Yeah, so out, like outside. Like above? Outside. Uh, just anywhere. So that's, sure, we'll put it there. Um, and then uh, just call timeout instead of, put timeout right before stop confetti. Set timeout. Yeah. And then wrap this in a round bracket. I shouldn't need to, because it should run in sequence. Unless my mind's in Arduino land, which is entirely possible. But let's just try that and see if I'm remotely right. Or it's just more infinite confetti. Set timeout, not enough arguments. OK, let's go back to them. Does it? Does this need to be before? Um, perhaps. Is it possible to wrap it in here? No. Like I this. Think so. I'm fine, I don't believe so. Oh, wait. Yeah. Sorry, I thought it worked briefly. Click generate once. Y'all know veggie chips? We do. Veggie chips are wonderful. Heck yeah. Um, oh. Are we first argument. We got confetti. We're adding a timeout argument for it. Uh, first argument should be called back to the last argument should be milliseconds almost done. All right. Uh -oh. Sorry, I got distracted. Uh, okay, let's read that one more time. So first argument should be. Okay, okay, okay. So wait, really? First argument should be callback. Second argument. Because okay, so if you're editing that, that's just the. Uh... Okay. Um, sorry, I'm processing what's happening. Um, so that's closed there. Why am I? Sorry. I had it briefly in my head and then I lost it. I don't know why that's a hard chunk of logic for my brain. Um, Should we request help from Matt? Sure, because we're very close. And what Chicken Chicken said makes sense, but I'm not structuring it right in my head. Um, hey, Matt, can we, can we briefly borrow your brain? So we added a timeout function right here for the confetti, these lines. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to run this function stop confetti. And then we call set timeout right here. But right now, it's currently still running infinitely. Uh, Chicken Chicken said the first argument should be called back, and the last argument should be milliseconds. Almost done. Oh. Set timeout. What you're going to do after you to Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah, so this function, uh, okay. <laughs> this this set timeout thing is just that delaying delaying by a hundred milliseconds running this function right here. So we just that... we just put stop confetti instead of the function, right? Well, are these numbers doing anything that we need? No, it was just from the example that we.
So what is this doing? Stop confetti uh, if you go down. Oh, it'll clear the rectangle. Which is currently just the canvas. But wait, which is what canvas? We drew a canvas around this whole thing. Uh, it's supposed to be called inside of the start confetti function. Isn't it? Oh, oh yes. This oh, totally it's just sense. outside of it. Yeah. Oh, OK. I got you. And you can delete chicken, them. chicken, why are you such a beast? You can delete those very Honestly. Too. Yeah, no, chicken, chicken's on it, for sure. Oh, wait, it is getting called right there. No, 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 you just deleted the whole function. So the thing you just cut. What is all this? Holy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. That's hold the, the hold confetti. On. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> go back, go back, go back. Uh, the stuff you just deleted, or you, did you copy that or paste it? Yeah, yeah, and then delete set timeout function, I think, right? Yeah, because the function gets called set timeout, and then it'll run this. It's, OK, I think this will work. Chicken, chicken, always coming in clutch. Yeah, oh, it's 100. only 100. Uh, do you want to do like, just add a zero or something? 1,000. Whoa. I know, I keep touching the mouse when I'm clicking, and then it like messes up where my hand is. OK, it stops. We need to, we need to make it not completely. It needs to fade. Uh, what if we just call out, can we just remove initialize confetti? We just need to clear. Let's see, hold on. True. Oh, animation complete false. Oh, I had hope that sounded so true. <laughs> <laughs> one second, Kevin. One second. <laughs> you only get it celebrated for one second and then get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> that might be OK, like the disappearing. Oh, we're so close. But it, it, it feels like it feels so choppy just pulling it out like that. Mm, I know what you really want. You want the confetti to fall from the top, top of the screen to the bottom. To the bottom, but not start making new confetti. Yep. Wait. Was this the initial goal? Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes. Kind of. Mm. I don't know if set timeout is the right. Well, it just was infinite. So at first we're like, well, if we set timeout, it'll stop. And then. OK, so I think you just need to really look into this code. Like, Yeah, it's been a long time since we got this particular you... thing working. We did not write all of this, no. No, 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 to be clear. No. We appropriated a lot of this from a tutorial. <laughs> OK, good. Particles are getting pushed here. What's MP? Uh, some other variable above, and I don't know what it stands for. So initialize confetti. This could be, a, it would be nice to get to stuff. Here's MP, max particles. Let's, yeah, that's what we were just saying, maximum particles, maybe. Maybe we do 20. Oh, 20, and then just run it and take out the. But it's going to still do the same thing. Right, but will it, will, if we then take out the timer, will it only ever generate 20? Or is I it think continuously generate? Yeah. I got you. OK. Mm. So it's still Less looping confetti, through. Less confetti, but. Oh, loop. Hey, look at that. That might be it. We, we, Maybe needed, we... we needed to, we still needed to draw. That loop contains the draw for confetti. On 179. Yeah. I'm going to call it here. Uh, there's a function that. It's redrawing the particles above. 
start confetti. Update. Let's draw. I think it's got to be update. And so it's like when oh, because there it says remaining. Oh, updates like getting that. called in draw. Okay, okay. I think we figured it out. Let me bring back this. There are two draws. Maybe we haven't figured it out. What is this? That was there the whole time. Request anim frame. I think I might have broke it. I think that was there the whole time. I think I might have like typed it or something. It doesn't exist. It doesn't know it exists. Try running it once. Request anim frame. Okay. Bring back the update to see if it's update. I think you should need oh. an update function to draw your particles when it moves. Particle dot y's h position is a hundred. Yeah, so it's moving it downwards. The update function. <laughs> it's moving it down Let's do a chicken chicken. For us, can figure this out for sure. We got this. Fantastic four. Fantastic four. There you go. Okay, so all that stuff is just set up stuff. So initialize, set the globals, initialize the confetti, push a bunch of confetti, start confetti, start confetti. This is broken for some reason. Stop confetti. Oh, animation complete equals true. So after, so set timeout function after a second, the animation is has been completed because that that is what stops the animation in the stop confetti function. Hmm. We don't need stop confetti. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and then restart confetti, clear timer, stop confetti, initialize confetti. So you just restart. Okay, so we never even use the clear timers. Okay, so this initializes a certain amount of confetti, and at some point we're adding more confetti right here, I think. Draw loop. We're pushing more particles. Let me think. Results.push particles i particles j dot draw. I think this is creating more of confetti. No, I'm wrong. So if I uncomment this, we should see confetti again. Okay. Update. Remaining flakes. Check for reposition. Position particle. Step particle. Start confetti. When are we generating more confetti? Because I think if we just cut that out, Two of us take like a electric thing. And then one person walk over. Or wait, wait, you need to walk over. Why don't you get ready? 
Because if we're a little bit late to this class, yeah, honestly, okay. it doesn't matter. Let's let's finish this. I think it's worth it. Let's get. We can get this confetti. It feels super close. Okay, so I want to know where's the initialize again. Initialize confetti, and we're creating new confetti particle right here. So I want to know where else we're creating a new confetti particle. So we're doing it here, and that's the only place. OK, so then where is initialize confetti being called? It's being called in the restart. Yeah. I think your first or second particle touchdown, your end line you of that. window, you can call stop confetti touch. Is he going to like that? She needs the laptop for the class. Oh, funny. <laughs> no, <not about> that. <laughs> uh, but it is really a, a really complex function affecting each other. Yeah, that's, yeah, totally agree. We're trying to like, we're trying to like wedge our own little chunk of code I know, inside this I massive, know. massive function. I don't know, maybe we then do pause just so we're not, so we're not too late for him. Ah, oh, it's so close, it feels so close. We'll get back to it tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. What's tomorrow? Wednesday? Yeah. You can do it tomorrow afternoon. What's in the morning? Uh, Pam. <laughs> no, you have a meal. And oh, then Pam. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a Okay, meal. so. There's two things. Yeah. We've got to leave Chicken Chicken, but. Um, and LA Coder. And, oh, LA Coder's there? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's co-op. Oh, cool. Um, But I think we're gonna get back to this tomorrow afternoon, um, which is 12 p.m. like PST, something like that. But um, thanks for jumping in the chat and helping us so much today. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yes, this yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. So um, hopefully we'll see you around again. That'll be fun. <laughs> um, before we sign off, I think we can probably stay on for a minute. And if any of you have any suggestions for what we wanna do, or feature requests, future projects you would like to see us to build, feel free to comment and then we'll do that after this project. Yeah. Full screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Before you leave, please check my project if you're interested. Uh, can you throw the link back in again? Oh, I think we have it open. It's next to the, the Figma one. Oh, we closed it. Yeah, we'll take we'll take the link again. Chicken, chicken. Yeah, that was super cool. Let me see if I can. So much fun, bro. Got to paste it. Hmm. And then we need to change the streaming. Perfect. I use a real app. Here it is. I use React library. Cool. Cool. Oh, switch to the video. Oh, oops. Back to the video. Cool. I think one thing, I couldn't get the emoji keyboard to trigger. Oh, there's a lot in here. <laughs> but it'd be nice for us to take our logo and make it and do an SVG, and then we can put that on it. it would be super cool. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, React is cool, for sure. We definitely want to move into doing more and more React stuff. Yeah, I've done React stuff before, but Will and Weiwei are less familiar, so that's why we're just kind of doing it in plain vanilla JavaScript, you know, just our projects and stuff. But uh, yeah, this is cool. We'll, we'll check it out in more detail. It's awesome. Hopefully we can upload an SVG or two to it as well, and then it can be hosted, yeah. which would be cool. Alrighty, we're going to head out. That's see awesome. Ya, see you maybe tomorrow, Chicken Chicken, and LA Coder. Yeah. Thank you for your help. This was awesome. Yes, thank you for all the help and suggestions. Great. I hope you guys uh, all learned something. So, yeah. You definitely taught us stuff. So, uh, well, you if taught, anything, we you learned stuff. stuff so. so, we learned that was stuff. Great. <laughs> <laughs> all right.